The stars shine brightly in the night sky, as a torn-up helmet squeaks in the dead of the night. Silent and nimble, armed soldiers trudge through the field of tall grass, carrying flashlights. North Korean soldiers have taken South Korean soldiers as hostages. They have done this to provoke the South Korean army into attacking them, which would then start a war between the two countries. The higher-ups of the army have a plan though. They have sent the Special Forces Alpha team to rescue the two soldiers, as well as send the North Korean soldiers back where they came from quietly, which would be a very difficult task. You see Jin, captain of the Alpha team, arrives, where several other South Korean soldiers aim at a warehouse-like building. He is stopped right there, and he claims that the Alpha team is here to take over the mission. They get situated in their positions, and prepare to begin their mission. When asked what they are doing, Si Jin says they will talk it out with a dialogue. The Alpha team comes into North Korean vision, where loud beams are flashed onto them, and they raise their hands up, telling the perpetrators that they want to talk it out with them. It does not seem like the North Korean soldiers will turn back without a fight. So, Si Jin speaks in his mic about going in with Wolf, a code name for his teammate. The two from Alpha team get led in the North Korean hideout, and they have a stare down with the opposing army, who pulls out a gun, but then takes it away, and instead brings out a combat knife, saying they cannot just let the South Korean army go without a fight. Si Jin and Wolf get their knives out, and they engage in a fight with the other army. Even though they are outnumbered, they are still able to put up a good fight, and soon, alarms start blaring as it gets more and more serious. The North Korean in charge of the hostage situation goes directly into combat with Yu Si Jin, who expertly slashes at the man. It is a close fight, but Si Jin seems to be better at hand-to-hand -hand combat. The fight is taken outside on the field, and the North Korean captain is able to pierce Si Jin, also known as Big Boss as his code name, around the stomach. Si Jin flinches a bit, but they have a dialogue, and the South Korean captain is able to convince the North Korean one to go back as a soldier, and not to lose his life out here as a casualty. North Korean soldiers return back, and Si Jin speaks in his microphone. Problem resolved. The next scene shows Si Jin and his teammate playing a shooting game at a stand in a civilian area. They seem to be on break from their duties. The shooting game does not go their way, probably because the toy guns are rigged, so that customers would not win big prizes. Suddenly, there is a woman who screams thief, and a boy is seen climbing his bike and driving off. The righteous soldiers get in position to stop the boy down, using the toy gun. They accomplish, and the boy is knocked off the bike, and a bunch of coupons land everywhere. The bike is successfully taken by the owner, and Si Jin tends to the fallen boy, fixing his injuries and telling him to be careful, because one wrong move can result in lifelong spinal injury. The smooth soldier on break asks the shopkeeper with the toy gun to sell him two teddy bears and a marker, which confuses him but he does as he is told, because of the air of authority the two soldiers hold. Later on, the two of them sit at a cafe with the two teddy bears beside them, which makes the passerby girls giggle. Seo Di Young, the one who is known as Wolf, wonders if the young boy who fell off his bike is okay, the boy reminds him of his own past. Si Jin assures him that the boy knew how to fall off a bike from the side, indicating athleticism, hence meaning the boy will be fine. Si Jin teases his friend about having such a soft heart, even though he is so aggressive in battle. Si Jin gets a call from someone named Yoon Myung Ju. The name makes Di Young react, and he tells Si Jin not to pick up the phone begging him that he will introduce him to his cousin, who is a flight attendant. The cheeky alpha captain agrees, and asks for his friend's phone, so that he can see the girl's social media. Right as Di Young is rummaging in his pockets, he remembers that he got pickpocketed by the young boy they stopped. He gets up immediately, and heads for the hospital, where the boy is taken in an ambulance. The boy is taken off from the ambulance, and is admitted in the hospital, all the while grumbling. He has two teddy bears around his neck, probably to act as a headrest, so the young boy doesn't get hurt. The phone he stole from the soldier lands in a nurse's hand, who picks up a call from Yoon Myung Ju, and tells the woman that the owner of the phone got in a motorcycle accident, not knowing that he is a thief. A pretty doctor comes out to see the patient, laughing at the young boy, and noticing the medical chart Si Jin drew on the boy's arm. The woman teases the boy a little, before assessing his injuries. He has a fractured rib, and a sprained ankle, and she points out that there is thief written on his arm. She tells him to talk to his insurance company and leaves, telling the nurses to get his x-ray done. The nurse hands him the phone he stole, and leaves him alone. After everyone leaves, the boy calls someone, and begins to run away. Kang Mo Yeon, the doctor is talking to her senior professor, when she notices her patient running away. She begins running after him. At the nurse's station, he is brought back by Mo Yeon, and is told by the other nurses that he will have to pay the consultation fee if he wants to leave. He tells them that if he is caught by his older brothers, he will be found in a mortuary, not a hospital. The rude young boy excuses himself to the bathroom, muttering to himself how he wants to burn the place down. He has handed Mo Yeon the phone he stole, and on it, someone named Big Boss is calling, making Mo Yeon get the wrong idea. She probably thinks the young boy is part of a gang. Si Jin and Di Young arrive at the hospital and head for the emergency room, not knowing that the boy has escaped from under their noses. They call Di Young's phone again and find it near a doctor, who is working on a patient. 
Mo Yeon picks up the call and turns back to see Si Jin answer it. She asks if he is Big Boss, and he says he is, but then questions why she has the phone. Mo Yeon rudely questions if he is the brother that the young boy mentioned, and then tells the nurse to usher them outside the room, and to notify the security team to keep an eye on the two men. Little does she know, she is speaking to the Special Forces Army. Si Jin scoffs a bit, and looks back at the straightforward doctor, who looks back at him. There seems to be a connection between them. The two men discuss where the young boy must have gone, and Si Jin tries staying behind, smiling at where the doctor stands. But Di Young takes his friend, and goes outside of the hospital, where they both witness the boy getting beat up by a bunch of guys. Si Jin asks Di Young if he absolutely needs to get his phone back, and he says he does. Si Jin walks to the delinquent boys, and stops what they are doing. The boy begs Di Young to save him, and says he will return the phone if the two men help. The reason the boy, Gi Baeim, is getting beaten up is, because he wanted to leave the gang, who asked him for withdrawal money, amounting to 5 million won. Turns out, the reason why Di Young knows so much about gang-related stuff, is because he used to be in one. Hearing this, the delinquent boys ask the older man to settle with them, and he easily agrees, saying they should settle this with money. He takes his wallet out, and challenges the huge group to take it from him. He claims he is Kim Gi Baeim's brother, and just like that, he tells Si Jin to stay out of the way. Expertly, Di Young handles some of the guys. Turns out, they also have knives. Si Jin tells everyone to take their knives or guns, and throw them out for a fair battle. But the delinquents do not want to fight fair, they take their knives out to fight with the two men. Back at the hospital, Yoon Myung Ju waits in the waiting room to ask for Di Young, who she thinks is the patient. Mo Yeon walks up to her, they seem to know each other, and they exchange greetings in a rude manner. Clearly they do not like each other very much. Mo Yeon asks the girl in the army uniform to pay for the patient's bill, and leaves the room. She hurries to her friend's room, and starts badmouthing Myung Ju, because apparently she stole Mo Yeon's crush back in the day. Her friend pays no heed to the doctor's words, and says Myung Ju's boyfriend is a soldier, not a 20-year-old boy. The friend adds on, saying their relationship cannot have been easy, because of their difference in rank. The scene shifts back to Si Jin and Di Young, who hold an even more injured Gi Baeim, while being face to face with a hurt looking Myung Ju. The nurses and Si Jin take the boy away, and Myung Ju orders Di Young to follow her. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon asks Gi Baeim if Si Jin is the one who hit him, and even when she is told he did not, she does not believe it, and goes to check the CCTV footage. Si Jin follows her, wanting to clear out the misunderstanding. He tells her the boy stole his friend's phone, but the rigid doctor does not seem to believe it. She begins to call the police, but Si Jin smoothly whacks the phone from her hand, and catches it from behind her back, cutting the call. She stares at him dumbfounded, and he says getting the police involved will be problematic, because he is a soldier on leave currently. She repeatedly asks for her phone back, but he ignores it, and instead gives her proof that he is indeed a soldier. He tells her to follow him, claiming there is someone who can prove his identity. Myung Ju talks to Di Young, but he is rigid, only speaking in one word replies, because she is in a position higher than him. This stresses her out, and she asks why he does not pick up her calls. He tells her he left for the army mission, because he had a change of heart, and starts walking away from her. Myung Ju tells him to stop several times, but he does not. But when she refers to him as sergeant, and asks how he can leave without saluting her, he stops, turns around and gives the girl a salute. She stares at him with teary eyes, frustrated, and then walks closer. She tells him to stand there all night, because she will not accept his salute. Si Jin comes in, pulling his friend's hand down, telling Myung Ju that this is considered hazing. But she says she is straightening out a cowardly soldier. She asks what he needs, and Si Jin asks her to confirm their identity. Myung Ju tells Mo Yeon to report the two men to the police, stating that they are runaway soldiers, and then walks away. As their identities are confirmed, Mo Yeon says the assault case might be a different story, and they head to the security room. As they wait outside, Si Jin's hand accidentally touches Mo Yeon, and she quickly pulls hers back, making small talk. She wonders if he is a murderer, but Si Jin assures her that he protects beauties, children and elders. They exchange each other's names, but Mo Yeon tells him not to be too friendly, as he extends his hand to shake hers. Back in the hospital room, Di Young stands beside a battered Gi Baeum. He asks the boy what sport he does, and says he himself did judo. Gi Baeum says he used to do taekwondo, and even earned a gold medal. The nurse asks him for his guardian, and the young boy says he has none. But Di Young steps forward, saying he does have a guardian. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon checks the footage, and is impressed with the way Si Jin beats up those thugs. As they are walking back, Si Jin shows her the injury he got a few days ago. Mo Yeon gasps and takes him to a hospital room, where she stitches up the wound. Fighting earlier must have opened the stab wound. They stare at each other again, feeling a connection, and Mo Yeon tells him to keep the wound sanitized. Si Jin asks her if he can come to the hospital every day. It is probably so that he can see her. She tells him he can come three times a week, maybe four times a day. He comes closer to her face and asks if she has a boyfriend. But she replies back with a question for him, whether he has a girlfriend or not. 
They stare at each other. A few days later, Di Young jogs back to the army building, where Si Jin is. The captain is trying on two sets of uniforms, asking which one is better. He wants to look his best, for when he travels quite far, just to get his wound sanitized. The soldiers talk about the man, who dumped the only beautiful female soldier, Myungju, and the others shut him up quickly. The two soldiers go back to Heesung Hospital, where Di Young pays for Gi Baeum's bill, who asks him how he escaped from the gang he was in, to which he says that he joined somewhere they would never follow, the army. Si Jin waits to see Mo Yeon, but she is busy with an emergency patient, who is being taken to the emergency room. The bed is being carried too slow, and she does not realize when Si Jin helps her push the bed quicker. He returns back without getting treated, because obviously Mo Yeon will have been busy in the surgery room. As he is working out several hours later, he gets a call from the pretty doctor, who says she knows he came and left, and Si Jin says he definitely wants to get treated tomorrow. They subtly flirt back and forth. She changes the topic, and asks if he is taking his medicine. She then asks if he can come tomorrow, but the soldier says he wants to meet her right now. She tells him to come. He goes back to the hospital to pick her up, buying movie tickets online, and Mo Yan comes down from the elevator, wearing lipstick. Suddenly, he sees the news, and knows he will be called up for his duties. He gets a call, and goes up to the rooftop, notifying Mo Yon, who follows him up, and is surprised to see that a helicopter is here to take him. He makes her promise that he will see her next week, and they will watch a movie. She watches him, looks back at her from the helicopter, and then he gets on, flying away as she stares up with her hair blowing. The next scene is an army plane flying through the sky, with Big Boss and Wolf. They have flown seven hours, and every soldier takes their tag off. Wolf says it is because in case they are eliminated, they need to be unidentifiable. They are currently in Afghanistan. Si Jin stares at Mo Yon's face from the helicopter, with a gentle look in his eyes and a thoughtful expression. From behind, Mo Yon is approached by her co-worker, and she absent-mindedly asks him if a Korean soldier is supposed to be picked up by helicopters and is shot at. Her co-worker says that is not very likely. Where Si Jin and his team are, they are notified of the mission. They have to rescue hostages from Afghanistan, teamed up with an army from another country. The dangerous mission includes explosives, and one soldier from the South Korean unit sets off a bomb, failing the mission, which in turn makes the other country's soldiers lash out at Si Jin's group. The white man throws a knife which almost hits the captain. Having had enough with the racism and insults, Si Jin throws the knife back, which lands in between the man's legs. Furious, he begins a hand-to-hand -hand fight with Si Jin, who beats the man up. The fight continues on, as Di Young tells his teammates how this is not just a spar, it's a real battle, and no one can interfere. Si Jin continues fighting with the soldier in a precise manner, dodging and landing kicks and punches swiftly. Finally, they are interrupted by the higher-ups, who scold both soldiers, before telling them to go back to work. Mo Yeon talks with her friend in the bathroom. She seems to have applied for a position, and just had her interview. There is another doctor who applied for the same position. She and Mo Yeon exchange snide remarks, before the other doctor leaves, leaving Mo Yeon with her friend. While she is in surgery, the girl enters as the main surgeon, and begins taunting Mo Yeon while she is performing an important surgery. And soon enough, the monitors start beeping, and blood fills the suction, as the woman makes a mistake. As Mo Yeon deals with the surgery, Si Jin and his friend go into battle. They carry the mission out, unleashing a ticking bomb. The main surgeon stops Mo Yeon from doing the surgery, and says she will fix her mistake herself, but yet again she makes another one, making blood spurt from the open wound, onto Mo Yeon's mask. Team Alpha gets in position, and rushes into where the hostages are kept, while the other country's team falls for a trap. The Korean soldiers begin shooting, Wolf climbs up onto the roof. Si Jin throws a smoke bomb, blinding everyone, and the scene switches back to the hospital, where Mo Yeon is diligently working on her patient. The army fights, and finally after a long fight, they are able to retrieve the hostages. Si Jin speaks in his microphone mission complete. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon's patient is now stable too. She comes out of the operating room, angry at the mistake her colleague made, as another nurse follows her. Mo Yeon asks about her pregnancy, and softly touches the woman's stomach. Her husband, who is also a nurse, comes up to his wife and hugs her. He asks to talk to Mo Yeon in private, and after bidding bye to his wife sweetly, the young man, Lee Kai Hoon, admits to his senior doctor that he lost the ring with which he had to propose. Mo Yeon berates him for his mistakes, but he manages to find the ring in time, and runs away from the scary doctor. Later, she sits with her friend and eats snacks, her friend asks if Si Jin has called her yet. He has not. Mo Yeon looks at the x-rays of Si Jin with love-struck eyes. The next day, Mo Yeon has her day off, and she walks out with a bare face and tied up hair. She does not expect to see Si Jin waiting for her next to his car, and she quickly hides her face with her arms in embarrassment, stating that their date was in two hours. Si Jin offers to take the pretty doctor home, so she can wash up like she wanted to, and they go inside, as Mo Yeon tells him she is very hungry, and wants him to order takeout. 
As she rushes to the bathroom, he laughs at how weird but beautiful she is. He walks around and sees the notice of water shutdown notice on her fridge. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon is washing the shampoo out of her hair, and the water runs out. She ties a towel around her hair and pretends to be done with her shower, but soon realizes that Si Jin knows there is no water. Embarrassed, she grabs two bottles of water from her fridge and runs back to wash the shampoo out of her hair. They sit and have some food together as Si Jin asks if he can ask her a question, she lets him. He quietly asks if she thought of him, and without a pause, she says she did. To which he replies that so did he, like a man. After eating at home, they go to watch a movie, while drinking cold coffee. They talk excitedly with each other, slightly teasing too. It is obvious that the two get along with each other naturally. So Jin watches Mo Yeon laugh, swooning at the beautiful strong woman. His phone vibrates, and he is suddenly called for another mission, which seems to be his life. When Mo Yeon realizes that she is getting blown off again, she tells him to go with a hurt expression. He knows it has hurt her, but he has no choice but to listen to orders. Mo Yeon also gets a call from her co-worker, and she rushes to the hospital, after getting the news of her colleague taking the position she wanted. She argues with her professor about how this is her third try, but the girl who has connections got the professorship position she worked so hard for. Her professor does not listen to her words and leaves, leaving Mo Yeon alone with the woman, who stole her position, and soon enough, they get into a fight and pull each other's hair. The other staff members have to come and break up the fight. Mo Yeon sits alone in a corridor and cries loudly. Everything in her life is stressing her out. Meanwhile, Team Alpha gets congratulated by the general, and they are given a long leave to another place where they will be trained and will not have to go on missions. Si Jin goes back to Hisung Hospital, but Mo Yeon is not there. He watches the TV as she appears on a live broadcast. He waits by her house as she gets out later that evening and sees him with a surprised look on her face. They sit in a cafe together, and the doctor asks for an explanation, something the soldier cannot give because of the rules. She talks of her saving lives, whereas his job would be taking lives to keep others safe. At last, Mo Yeon apologizes and they bid each other farewell. The doctor gets up and walks out of the cafe, leaving the soldier for good. Later on, Si Jin is showering when his friend, Di Young joins him, and they talk a bit, as he tells Si Jin that there will be pretty women in Yurok. Eight months later, the soldiers are seen jogging in their uniforms at the island. Si Jin rests in a jeep, before he is called to identify a suspicious explosive, found near the ground. He fixes the issue, but says they won't notify the US forces in charge of detonators. This decision has him in trouble, as he and Di Young are called by their higher officials, and berated. Si Jin does not take it seriously though, and he is further punished, as he and his friend are made to jog for a long time, while holding their bags. They are even teased by their juniors, but the cheeky Si Jin continues running, while singing an upbeat song. Meanwhile, it seems being on a live talk show, has made Kang Mo Yeon well known as a beautiful doctor, who is able to explain things well. She seems to be the face of the hospital. As she walks in, she is notified of all the new and returning patients by the nurse. She does rounds with all the VIP patients, dealing with their annoying requests. During her break, she goes to Subway and orders sandwiches for everyone. She talks excitedly with her friends, as she is once again taunted by the snide woman, who stole her position, now annoyed because Mo Yeon got a better position. But the pretty doctor does not pay her much mind, instead she coolly replies, before leaving for the rooftop, where she stands and thinks about Si Jin and their conversation from months ago. Si Jin, back in Yurok, stops a soldier from shoveling, and teaches him how to do it right, but ends up getting hurt. The soldier is Gi Bam. It seems he has done the same thing Di Young did, and became a soldier. Later, the two friends sit together at a bar and drink beer, when they witness a Korean girl buying a gun. Si Jin warns her about not using the gun properly, and she runs out of there after claiming that she has only bought it to protect herself. Mo Yeon has lunch with her co-workers, as they talk about an eco-friendly station Hisung is building in Yurok. Some people will have to move there temporarily. Just then, the young chairman comes, and asks Mo Yeon out on a date. Since he is a divorcee, her colleagues tell her to think about it. Later that night, Mo Yeon is called to the hotel. She stands dumbfounded, as the chairman acts indecently towards her. She smiles and walks closer, before hitting him with her purse. The next day, she regrets it as she might get fired. At the doctor's meeting, the chairman has his revenge by telling Mo Yeon that she will be going to Yurok as their best doctor. In Yurok, Di Young shows Si Jin the list of medical staff, including Mo Yeon's name. He already knows she is coming. The staff have landed in Yurok, and stand there in the heat, as the chairman calls and asks to speak with Mo Yeon. He says she can still change her mind and come back to Korea with him, but Kang Mo Yeon gives him a hard-headed reply and hangs up. The plane that will take them to their base arrives, and Mo Yeon's head scarf flies off. As she runs to get it, it flies further. The soldiers get off, walking towards the medical team, and among them, there is Si Jin. He walks closer to Mo Yeon, along with his group, as she stares at him in awe. 
But he walks right past her, not stopping to greet her, probably because he thinks their interactions won't last this time either. As Si Jin and his team get out of the plane, they head towards the team of doctors. Si Jin crosses Mo Yon and picks up her scarf that fell on the ground, all the while introducing himself to the group of doctors, some of which recognize him from the first time he came to the hospital. Si Jin walks to Mo Yon and hands her scarf back. She looks down at it and then takes the piece of cloth quietly. The medical team head to their camp as the soldiers around them sing a happy melody and put a flower necklace on all the women in the medical team. Kim Gibeam goes inside Mo Yon's camp and introduces himself again. He shows them that he has become a soldier, impressing the two girls, who knew him as a runaway thug. As Lee Kai Hoon, the energetic and young doctor on their team, is taking pictures of the area, one of the soldiers stops him and asks him to delete the pictures he has taken because of rules and regulations. Mo Yeon comes from behind and talks about how these soldiers keep everything a secret, unknowingly referring to her short relationship with Si Jin. She walks around the area when something gets in her shoes and she takes it off to get the dirt out. Just then, Si Jin gets something out of his jeep and ignores her, walking into his building. Mo Yeon wonders if he is pretending not to see her. However, when Si Jin goes in, he eyes the pretty doctor from the tiny window, before sighing to himself. He then takes the package he took out to Di Young, who refuses to open it, fearing that it will be a bomb, but Si Jin tells him to be man, hilariously before backing away to save himself. Di Young does open it, and he finds gifts for the soldiers. In the package, there is an envelope as well. Di Young reads it, as Si Jin rambles about having no presence. Di Young closes the letter with a realization that Myung Ju is being deployed in Yurok as well, meaning she will be in the same place as him. Back in Korea, she reports her new duties to her father, who is also a higher official in the army, and the man tells his daughter that he likes Yu Si Jin as his son-in-law. Myung Ju talks back to her father, telling him she loves Di Young, because he is a real soldier. She tells him that she can't leave someone she loves. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon is on call with her friend, telling her about meeting Si Jin again, and how uncomfortable it is. Just then, the call gets cut because of no signals. She walks a bit further to see the local children of Yurok playing in the field, and putting dirty things they found in their mouths. Mo Yeon crosses the restricted area in an attempt to get them to stop and hands out a bar of candy to one of the children. But she starts stressing out when all the kids surround her, asking her for more candy. You see Jin crosses the zone as well, and ushers the kids somewhere else, in their foreign language. Mu Yeon starts walking away from the soldier, but stops as she steps on something that makes a sound. Si Jin tells her to stop where she is, and tells her that she has just stepped on a landmine. Mu Yeon, being a civilian, is scared out of her mind, and screams at Si Jin to get help. But he starts joking around, and takes the situation lightly, something the young doctor does not understand, because this is a life or death situation for her. He comes close to her, and puts his own foot where hers is, telling her he will die in her place, but Mo Yeon calls him crazy for saying such a stupid thing, and tells him to go get help from someone. As she starts pushing at him, they both tumble to the floor. Luckily, the landmine does not blow up, but the fear of it going off makes Mo Yeon cling to Si Jin's chest, who tells her that the landmine was a lie. She gets off him and begins crying a little, before walking away from the suddenly concerned soldier. She crosses all the people, who are eating meat as a snack, and goes to wash up. Si Jin tells his friend that he made her cry, and runs after her, apologizing earnestly until she forgives him. All the soldiers suddenly begin to salute something in the air, and Si Jin turns Mo Yeon around, and she sees Korea's flag up in the air, so that's why the soldiers are saluting. Behind her, Si Jin says he is happy to see her again, but she doesn't reply. Later that night, the soldiers and medical team set up the proper equipment and camp for medical services. Mo Yeon lays in her tent at night, with eyes wide open. The next morning, she and the other nurses stare at the shirtless soldiers who are jogging. They stare hard-eyed at the sweaty men so early in the morning. But Si Jin soon arrives in front of Mo Yeon, dismissing the morning practice and asking about her schedule for the morning and afternoon, in terms of her job. He smiles knowingly at what she is trying to peek at. The medical team gets set up with all the proper equipment, and Mo Yeon enters with all the male soldiers trailing behind her. They are here for their blood test, claiming that they love pain. They probably like seeing such a pretty doctor, who smiles at the soldiers too. Si Jin comes to see what is going on, and as he is about to turn back, the doctor stops him and makes him sit to get his blood tested. She teases him by saying she can't find his vein, but soon he inserts in the right spot, alarming her, and tells her to fill the vial with blood. There is someone who enters the camp, an older man who thanks Si Jin for his services, and suddenly, there seems to be an explosion nearby. The soldier alerts that there seems to have been a car crash, and the old man worries if his truck toppled over. The soldiers ride to the area, including Si Jin and Di Young, and witness the fallen truck. The truck is a UN cargo truck, and they head down to see if there are any survivors. The people in the driving and passenger seat are checked for their pulse, but there is none. There is an emerging man from the truck, and he claims he is from UN and demands treatment, but sneakily, he gets a gun out and tries to shoot Si Jin, but the alpha leader is quick to disarm the man. 
The man was pretending to be in the UN, and the truck is loaded with arms and ammunition. The police are reported of this, and the foreign man thanks the Korean soldiers for their service. Mo Yeon runs up to Si Jin, who has just returned, and asks if anyone was hurt. But he says it was a car accident, and empathizes that the doctors must have been taken aback. But Mo Yeon assures him that they are all used to emergencies. She then asks Di Young for the Wi Fi password, but the soldiers are not allowed to give it out. However, the cheeky friend tells her that there is an internet cafe in the nearby city, and Si Jin can take her there. They cross the beautiful sea on a steep road, as Mo Yeon talks on the phone about internet banking. After she hangs up, Si Jin asks her what she is up to, and Mo Yeon tells him that she is quitting the hospital and opening her own clinic. You see Jin asks if it is because of the scandal she had with the CEO. He seems to know about it. He further asks if he was a bad guy, and Mo Yeon says she would not be here in Europe if he were a good guy. Si Jin mutters to himself about how he did not step aside just so she could meet a man like that, but Mo Yeon changes the topic. She asks if he is angry with her, because it definitely seems like it, but he says he has no reason to be, and continues driving. Si Jin asks if the internet is all that Mo Yeon needs, and takes her to some place that is not an internet cafe, but has better Wi-Fi. They enter a bar that the woman, Si Jin and Di Young first met at. Confused, Si Jin asks about the owner, Daniel, but the woman says that she and Daniel are both owners. She recognizes Mo Yeon to be one of the doctors from Korea, and when Mo Yeon asks who this woman is, Si Jin tells her a bit of the woman and her part-time jobs. He explains that Daniel told him about his Korean-Russian wife, but the woman scoffs and says that she and Daniel are just comrades. They then ask if they can use the Wi-Fi, and the woman goes to the back to search for the router. Si Jin leaves her there for an hour, while he attends to his own duties. He goes to the main army camp, and informs his higher-ups of what happened with the UN truck. His higher-up informs him that this organization attack is known as Merchants of Death, who smuggle arms and ammunition. Among them is their very dangerous leader, who does not think twice before killing, and the local Yuruk police are involved in the illegal crimes as well. The higher-up tells Si Jin not to cause trouble, and to stay away from them, because back in Korea, they will get promoted. Back at the army and medical camp, Di Young remembers his younger days, when he was approached by Myung Ju's father, while they were having lunch. At that time, he asked Seo Di Young if he was dating his daughter. The father said he worries for his daughter's future, and in code words told him to break up with the girl. Di Young had asked if this was an order, and being a person who always follows orders, he put a stone over his heart, and broke up with the girl he cared for, which prompted him to master sergeant. On their car ride back, Mo Yeon asks Si Jin if there is something bothering him, and he tells her that his comrade, Seo Di Young has been ordered to go back to Korea. It is probably because Myung Ju will be arriving soon, and her father does not want them to be together. He tells her that the order is unfair, because it comes from the position of a father. Mo Yeon asks him a question she has been curious about. She asks him how Di Young and Myung Ju met in the first place. He tells her that there was a joint march, and Myung Ju was an army surgeon, who witnessed Di Young helping his fellow comrade out in the heat. She had approached him and told him to take his boots off, because the state of his feet were in dire need of medical assistance. But the rigid soldier had not listened to her, because he had plans of his own. He had planned to crash his ex-girlfriend's wedding. While Si Jin is telling Mo Yeon the story, he stops the car by the sea and tells Mo Yeon to come out, because they will be going to a beach together. When she says it is far, he says he wants to spend a long time with her. This makes Mo Yeon stand in her tracks, unmoving. Si Jin looks back and resumes the story of how Di Young actually did crash his ex-girlfriend's wedding. But, he did it with Myung Ju. The curious doctor follows him, in order to hear more of the story. After Di Young crashed a wedding, he got in the car, and was surprised to see Yoon Myung Ju at the back. She told him she wants to make his ex regret, and then changes her clothes, while telling him to turn the rear view mirror around, so he does not look. Mo Yeon listens interested, and Si Jin smiles, remembering that this is the moment he comes into the story. He was the boy Myung Ju's father liked for her. But, Myung Ju did not like Si Jin, because to her, he looks like a girl, so she asked Di Young to pretend to be her boyfriend, to which he agreed, because he liked her. Mo Yeon listens and gets a little jealous over the fact that Myung Ju's father liked him for his daughter. Si Jin asks her to get on the boat, but the jealous doctor asks if the two soldiers and Myung Ju are in a love triangle. But in order to tease her, Si Jin does not answer and gets her on the motorboat and drives it to a small beach like island. The sea looks refreshing, covered by small mountains with their boat in between. They finally reach the beach, and Mo Yeon smiles, refreshed. Si Jin ties the boat and offers the doctor a hand, but she gets out herself. They head towards an abandoned ship, and Mo Yeon marvels at the beauty of the beach. Si Jin looks at her and hands her a pebble, telling her the pebble means that she will return here. Mo Yeon then walks to the ship more and goes below it. She asks what a ship like this is doing here, and Si Jin says it is enchanted. She asks if he has ever been enchanted, and he seriously replies that he has, and she knows he has. This makes her stare at him softly. Again, he asks her how she has been, and if she has been good in the ER as she has said she was before. Mo Yeon tells him that she does not do surgeries anymore, 
and that she did not come here with good intentions, she was pushed into this by her seniors. Si Jin quietly replies okay. It is now nighttime and they have returned back. The medical team has dinner together, and Kai Hoon gets out instead of eating in a bowl, because he is said to be a rich spoiled brat. Later, he sits and talks with his pregnant wife on call, when he is approached by a local hungry kid. The kid asks for some food, telling Kai Hoon that he heard the Korean doctors give food around. The doctor stares at the kid, and tells him not to go around touching people's clothes with those dirty hands, but just then, the kid collapses. Kai Hoon remembers his duties as a doctor, and carries the kid inside, where Mo Yeon inspects the child. Mo Yeon remembers that the child has lead poisoning, and orders a bunch of treatments for him. She is obviously a well-informed doctor, who knows all different types of diseases and poisoning. Si Yun offers to stay and help the child communicate, but the doctor rudely tells him she does not need his help. They have a slight argument, and Si Jin leaves the room. He walks up the steps of a building, when the alarms start blaring and Di Young approaches him, telling him that the entire area of Medicube is under FPCON2, that is force protection condition. The soldiers get in position, arming themselves, and then go outside the medical unit camp, situating themselves there. Medicube Field Hospital has a VIP patient, a president who is being transferred here. He is a famous political figure from Abu Dhabi, who has an emergency medical condition, and will be treated by the medical team from Korea. Mo Yeon takes a look at the medical chart of the patient, claiming that most of it must be a lie anyway, because the health of a president is to be a national secret, and only doctors like her deal with such cases. The cars arrive at the camp, and the treatment has started. As Mo Yeon is addressing the issues, the treatment has an adverse effect, and Mo Yeon realizes that there is something wrong, because the president's blood pressure is dropping. Mo Yeon says she will have to do an abdominal surgery. But before she can take him to the operating room, the president's secretaries stop her, telling her that only Arab doctors can operate on the president, and that they will be arriving in an hour. But Mo Yeon argues that the president does not have that much time. The secretaries do not listen and whip out their guns, making the poor doctors freeze, and the Korean soldiers get on standby. Mo Yeon agrees, but warns that the president will die if she takes her hands off him, and as proof, his blood pressure begins dropping. Just then, Si Jin gets an order, telling him not to let the doctors operate, because then they will have to take responsibility. Si Jin turns back, asking Mo Yeon if she will be able to save the patient, and Mo Yeon says she will. This makes him take out his earpiece, so that he does not get more orders. And then he gets his gun out, along with the rest of the soldiers, and he tells her to operate on him. Mo Yeon begins to move the bed to the operating room, and the Arab people get ready to attack, but Si Jin is quick to get into action, raising his gun as the soldiers follow suit. He tells them to shoot if they have to, he is obviously motivated to protect Mo Yeon, who has to save the patient as her first and foremost duty. The patient is then slowly ushered into the operating room by the doctors, and Mo Yeon takes a quick look at Si Jin's determination, and moves on to do her work. He also looks back at her as she is going. Back in Korea, the government and everyone involved is causing a ruckus, because of the different opinions concerning Si Jin's and Mo Yeon's decision. President Mubarak of the Arab League is an important person, and if anything happens to him during the surgery, all of Korea will be blamed, and it might turn into an international issue. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon begins the surgery, asking for the scalpel, as Si Jin ignores orders from his higher-ups, and continues aiming for the Arab guards. The higher-up talks in the microphone, telling his army at the base, that they have been put under FPCON1 because of this, and might even go to war. He says he will shoot everyone for disobedience. There is already a scar on the Arab patient's body, meaning he has had a surgery before, confirming that they should not trust the medical charts. Regardless of the issues concerning the matter, Mo Yeon begins by making an incision on the patient and operating on him. Suddenly, his pulse begins dropping, which stresses all the doctors in the room. Outside the room, the Arab guards threaten Si Jin again. But he is as cool as ever, not letting the stress show on his face. Mo Yeon is confident that she can stop the bleeding, and she expertly works on the patient, speaking orders. The Arab head doctor has finally arrived to the scene, but it also seems like Mo Yeon has successfully been able to control the condition of the patient. The patient's pulse has stabilized, and the difficult surgery has come to an end. The stable patient now rests, and the Arab doctor assesses him before coming outside, confirming that all is well. He taunts Mo Yeon, and then leaves. She falls to the floor in exhaustion, and asks for something to eat. Kai Hoon innocently asks, what will happen to them if the president does not wake up? In Korea, the government, along with the army and the medical staff sit together, to figure out the next steps they will have to take, in order to maintain peace. Di Young gets an order, telling him to dismiss Si Jin of his duties, and for him to get ready for apprehension. This is hard to hear for every one of the soldiers, but Si Jin calmly takes his vest off, getting ready to be summoned. The medical staff that operated sit quietly, eating cut noodles, while worrying if they did anything wrong during the surgery. Si Jin is kept in a storage room and soon, the lieutenant of a higher rank comes in, asking Seo Di Young to wait outside, and closes the door. He kicks Si Jin on his knee, and berates him harshly. 
He has trouble controlling his anger, but the soldier says he will take responsibility for everything and does not regret a thing. Outside, Mo Yeon runs up to meet Yu Si Jin, but she is not allowed to see him, not even for five minutes. The lieutenant comes out of the room and rudely asks to meet the crazy doctor named Kang Mo Yeon. She comes up from behind Se Young and introduces herself. He takes her outside and informs her that she might have just ruined Si Jin's career and all his efforts of the last 10 years. At first he is harsh, but then he sighs and tells her to pray that the Arab president wakes up soon. He then walks off, leaving the young doctor with her thoughts. The lieutenant gets into his jeep, telling Di Young to go back to Korea as per order. Si Jin is then approached by his friend, who tells him that he will be leaving soon, and that he cannot help it because it is an order. To make Si Jin feel better, Di Young assures him that the orders he gave out today were all correct, and they chuckle a bit. Next, Di Young goes to Mo Yeon and tells her she can see Si Jin, but for 10 minutes only. She goes to him as Di Young leaves in the car. Si Jin takes a seat on the floor by the door, telling Mo Yeon he is happy to hear from her. But, the first thing Mo Yeon says is, that she is sorry. He lightly jokes around, to make her feel better, as her eyes fill up with tears. He tells her that she really does look good in the operating room, and she asks why he did what he did. He says he could not help it, it is his duty to protect women and elders, and both were in front of him. Mo Yeon begins to sob, and asks if he needs anything in there, and he says he needs a bomb so he can break down the door. Mo Yeon asks how he can joke in this situation, and the soldier says, that he can pull it off somehow. Her time to talk is up, but before leaving, she hands him a mosquito coil, thinking he might need it, and he thanks her, saying it is exactly what he needed, knowing that in the storage room, there are cartons of the coil. He sits in silence, as Mo Yeon walks away, sad. Later, it seems the president has finally woken up. That means the surgery went well, and the doctors are not in danger any longer. The doctors sit out, relieved beyond their wits, and soon they are called to say goodbye to the Arab people, because they are finally leaving. The president's right-hand man looks at Mo Yeon, in gratitude from the helicopter. The news reaches Di Young, who is on call with Sergeant Choi, and Gi Baeum sniffles and asks how he can leave the young soldier, to which Di Young smiles before hanging up. As he walks to the army plane, he sees Myung Ju in front of him, who has just landed in Yurok. She walks to him, asking where he is going, and if he is running again. Di Young keeps his things down, before blurting out the order he was received, but Myung Ju slaps him midway, before sobbing while hitting him with her fists, telling him she wanted him to wait, that she asked him to wait. He plainly tells her to watch out for the mosquitoes, and begins to walk away, but when she holds his hand, he turns back, hugging her close, as her tears fall. He tells her to take care of herself in the deployment area, and salutes her, walking away. She screams at him from behind, asking why he hugged her and touched her, if he cannot take responsibility. There is a flashback of the two of them in the past, when they went to Di Young's ex-girlfriend's wedding. Myung Ju found out at the venue, that he did not go there for revenge, but he went to be considerate. And as he approached the bride, she was afraid, that he might have greeted her future husband. Myung Ju saw this as her cue to follow in, and she linked her arm with Di Young's, making it known, that he did not come bearing harm. Later, they had sat together drinking saju. And she told him to keep his promise, and tell Yu Si Jin that he is dating her. This must have turned into a habit, because they started occasionally drinking together. Di Young had somehow messed up, and now everyone had seemed to think, that Myung Ju did not want to get married at all. The monotonous soldier says, he only told everyone that he is dating the army doctor, but everyone had seemed to think something else. He had begun to tease her about the rumors of them, finding it funny, and that led to their budding friendship, and then love. There is a call from the Blue House, and the army chief is informed, that the Arab government wants the surgery to be kept a secret, and any action taken for, or against Si Jin, will depend upon the army, and the government will fully support it. Finally out of the storage room, the soldiers have a grand dinner for Si Jin, and Gi Baeum has cooked everything with tofu. The soldier praises all the soldiers for their duty, and begins eating, and just then, Mo Yeon comes in. Embarrassed with the eyes on her, she begins to leave, but Si Jin says he wants to talk now. They take the conversation outside, and she thanks him for trusting her. He says it must have been scary for her as well, and he apologizes for calling her a TV doctor before, and that she should not be called that, because she is incredibly talented. Suddenly, Si Jin is called by a soldier from behind. He and Mo Yeon turn back to see a car waiting for them, along with the Arab secretary. The car takes them to where the Arab president is. He sincerely thanks them for saving him. And then he gives Mo Yeon a card, saying it can save her when she needs it, and she jokingly asks, for two, to which the president laughs heartily. When they go outside, Si Jin asks to use his card right now. He asks for the car for the entire day, and takes Mo Yeon out on a date. She scolds him for using such an important card for a mere date, but it seems to be all Si Jin wants. They go to a beautiful cafe, with a nice view, 
and sit together as Mo Yeon talks about what she wants to do with the card. Seeing her interest for money, Si Jin asks why she became a doctor, and the young doctor says she thought she would get a lot of money being a doctor. She says she changed a lot in the time he did not see her, and that he did not change at all, and he jokes that he got more handsome. Suddenly, Si Jin gets a call and apologizes to Mo Yeon for having to cut their date short. She argues, saying she wants to go with him wherever he is going. It is someone's funeral as it seems, someone from an army. Si Jin remembers the time he spent with different soldiers, and among them is the leader of the drug business. He is also there at the small funeral, eyeing Si Jin before leaving. As night hits, Mo Yeon and Si Jin return back, and she asks him if the funeral was for his friend. He tells her that it was for his comrade, but also that he does not want to talk about it. He tells her that being together is not beneficial to the both of them, and walks away after bidding her goodnight. He sits alone beneath the night sky and thinks deeply. The next morning, Mo Yeon looks for Si Jin among the jogging soldiers, and stops Sergeant Choi who tells her that the soldier is at his disciplinary hearing. Mo Yeon did not know anything about this. Sergeant Choi scolds her for not knowing, because she was the one who insisted on the surgery. At the base, Si Jin's case is evaluated by the higher officials, and they decide to reduce his salary for three months, because of his prior actions. He does not have any objections, the higher officials also add, that he will not be able to take the promotion exam, to which he does not have any objections either. As he walks outside, Myung Ju trips him, and laughs about a soldier falling for such a flimsy booby trap. They talk lightly with each other, seeing as how they are still friends. Si Jin stands straighter, surprised at seeing Mo Yeon get out of the jeep, and walk towards the base. She is inside, fighting with the lieutenant about what is happening with Si Jin, but when he tells her what his punishment will be, she goes quiet. Si Jin barges in, and takes Mo Yeon away. He drives her to a secluded spot, and she asks why he has brought her here. Si Jin angrily says what she did was foolish. He lectures her about the honor he feels, when wearing the uniform he wears, and the sense of duty he feels without regret. He tells her to stay out of military problems. She realizes that her concerns have disrupted his duties, and she apologizes before driving off, hurt. Si Jin walks on the rocky road, when he gets a call from Di Young, who has reached Korea safely. He asks if he saw Myung Ju, and the two friends tease each other back and forth, before Si Jin hangs up. Si Jin finds some alcohol that Di Young hid for him, and just then, Mo Yeon enters. She sees him, and tries walking away, but the soldier stops her, telling her he wants some time with her. He offers her the bottle of wine, and she drinks straight from the bottle, making him smile. She apologizes for acting out, and he does too, and they have a light conversation. He asks if the wine is good, and then says that he wanted to watch the movie, and have wine with her back in Korea as well. Mo Yeon tells him that she never watched the movie they were watching together, because it had always reminded her of him. Hearing this, Si Jin begins staring at Mo Yeon, who asks if he wants that alcohol really badly. He tells her he can improvise, and suddenly comes closer to her, kissing her. Si Jin slowly opens his eyes, after he is done kissing her. They have their faces close to each other's, but as he goes back for another kiss, Mo Yeon turns her head, rejecting the act of adoration, and says goodnight before walking to her room, with the bottle of wine. She sits alone in the camp, and remembers how reserved Captain Yu Si Jin really is. In his room, Si Jin sighs, realizing what just happened. Rai Hwa, the Russian-Korean woman is sleeping in her room in town, when she hears rustling. She picks up her gun, aiming it at the silhouette by her curtain. There is a voice of a man, who tells her to put the gun down. It is Daniel, her husband. He greets his wife before telling her, that their friend died. Meanwhile, near the base camp, there is a plant being installed for energy, by Heesung Group. The medical staff is on a tour around the construction with the assistant manager, when they are approached by the chief manager of Yuruk Electric Power Corporation. The flimsy, superficial person, sporting a fashionable hat introduces himself in Korean, and in English, and the doctors hold in their laughter. Mo Yeon is called by Kai Hoon, who tells her that the boy they saved from lead poisoning ran away, and that his name is Blakey. Mo Yeon arrives at the hospital base, and scolds Kai Hoon for not keeping a close eye. What is worse is that he has called Yu Si Jin to come, and look for the boy, who ran away after drawing a rough map, that looks like he was saying that he is going home. Mo Yeon agrees to look for the boy with the help of Si Jin, and they set out in car. In the car, Si Jin looks at her, but she tells him to look away, or else they will crash. The soldier tries talking about what happened last night, but Mo Yeon blatantly says that she is avoiding the topic, because she is confused. She says she has to make sense of things. Si Jin tells her, he does not want her to feel bad about what happened. They finally see the boy walking in the field. They go to his house, and tell his mother the medicine schedule with the use of drawing. She sees the children she gave candy to once, and recognizes them. Si Jin praises her for her memory, and the smart doctor uses this chance to remind him, that she does not forget things easily. Meanwhile, Myung Ju sits in the army base, talking to the lieutenant who is oddly nice to her, probably because she is the daughter of an important man. She receives a call, and excuses herself quickly, saying it is more important than even her father's call. Turns out, there is someone, a soldier telling her of C.O.D. Young's entire schedule every day. 
Di Young overhears what is going on, and the soldier hides, still reporting as Di Young walks closer. On the other line, Myung Ju is happy that she got to hear Di Young's voice, and hangs up. Di Young scolds the soldier lightheartedly, and asks him to leave, and he hilariously runs away. Meanwhile, Si Jin has brought Mo Yeon to a restaurant, the same one where he and Di Young go to, and Mo Yeon asks why he became a soldier. He tells her what patriotism means to him, and that is his final answer. He also asks her a question, if he was not a soldier but a normal guy from a rich family, would it be easier to be with him? But Mo Yeon says no, because it would be too normal for her. After they are done, Si Jin walks out first, and he notices two strange guys nearby. One of them was the same man, who pulled a gun on them after the UN truck crash. Mo Yeon comes out after paying, and Si Jin stops her from looking back at the men, in fear that she would be in danger, and instead sends her to Yi Hua's shop. Mo Yeon goes without asking for much explanation, and meets Daniel there, who greets her. Mo Yeon asks if he is a doctor, because he introduced himself as a doctor, and he says he can fix people and things, knowingly telling her, that she is here because she needs a car. Meanwhile, Si Jin has pulled a gun on the two men, and instead of shooting at them, he shoots at the tire of their car, immobilizing them. Soon, several other thugs join them, and the boss finally comes into the scene. He looks familiar to Si Jin, and he recognizes the boss of the thugs as Argus, his old teammate. Meanwhile at Daniel's shop, Mo Yeon asks him how he met Si Jin, and he tells her they usually meet at funerals, which is a very vague reply. He politely asks if she wants tea, and she thanks him. Reluctantly, Mo Yeon asks the half-Korean, what exactly Captain Yu Si Jin's job is. He looks down a bit, and remembers something very dangerous about Si Jin. It is a flashback of when Si Jin was tortured by an army of some other country. As he was rescued, and they were going back, Si Jin's teammate was shot and eliminated, as he fell in the soldier's arms, lifeless. Argus was there as well. Present time, Si Jin asks what Argus is doing here, and he plainly says that he changed his job, and the job is very similar, shooting guns and making money. He threatens Si Jin to stay away, or he will be met with consequences, and this seems to hit Si Jin, who threatens the cunning-looking man back. Back at the shop, Daniel has told Mo Yeon of a few things Si Jin does, and Mo Yeon says she has heard enough. She wears a thoughtful expression on her face. As she is driving back, she calls him, her phone having his number saved as Big Boss. Suddenly, there is a big truck in front of her and as it passes, it leaves a cloud of dust which blinds Mo Yeon. She swerves her car, and her car falls off the cliff. She screams and screams, and as the car is about to plummet down, the tire screeches to a halt right before the end of the cliff, trapping Mo Yeon. Si Jin has picked up her call and talks calmly, telling her he will be there soon. He speeds to where Mo Yeon might be. Alone, Mo Yeon cries and records her voice, thinking she will die soon. She records the voice message to her mom while sobbing. And soon, the car moves forward a bit more. Behind her, Si Jin opens the door at the back and gets in. He gets in front, and tells her he will have to drop the car. She completely refuses, but he forces her to, by opening the airbag. As the car drops, Si Jin grabs the doctor from under the water, and brings her to shore. Since she has fainted, he gives her CPR until she spits out water. He asks her if she is fine, and is amused to see that she is hitting him with her hands. He pets her back as she controls her breathing. They finally come back to the base, and he drapes his jacket over her, telling her that her shirt was see-through, and he does not want anyone else looking at her. Later that night, Argus has the manager of the plant installation in his control. He threatens the man about a deal. The manager gives Argus a small package. The package is full of diamonds. Argus threatens the man to get the net delivery ready in a week. At the construction site, the chief manager returns, numb from the events of what happened, and one of the workers notices blood on his sock. Inside the army base kitchen, Mo Yeon sits and thinks about the worry she felt when she heard the tire burst, and just then Si Jin enters, giving her instant coffee. Mo Yeon tells him she can get him a sedative if he wants, and he asks if she is concerned for him, and she says she has to be, because he saved her. She then asks him about his personal life, that the first time they met, he said something about him saving a comrade through bullets, and asks if he was able to save him. Yu Si Jin remembers the entire incident, and he answers Mo Yeon, thinking about Argus. Mo Yeon tells him that he must have lied to her when he sent her to Daniel's shop, but the soldier asks why she cannot just trust him, and leave all of this to him. Mo Yeon tells him that things get complicated, when he replies in this manner, the way he closes himself off, when he feels like he should not share about himself with anyone. Suddenly, the lights flicker off, and their faces are illuminated by the fireplace. Si Jin jokes around again, and just then, the lights flicker back on. Mo Yeon stares at him with a smile, and he tells her he cannot look away from a gaze like that, which makes her wonder how many women he has been with. He turns the conversation to her, saying he knows that she stares at the soldier's biceps every morning. 
The next morning, the car that fell into the water is retrieved, and seeing its condition, Mo Yeon fumbles with her words, saying she will take responsibility for the damage. Si Jin tells her to have faith in Daniel, that there is nothing he cannot fix. But at that moment, the car falls apart even more, making Daniel fall to the floor. A while later, Daniel hands them a carton of walkie-talkie, and Si Jin says these are more handy than cell phones. Mo Yeon thanks Daniel, and asks him how much money she owes him for the car. But Daniel says the car will never be normal again even if he fixes it. Later, you see Jin teaches Mo Yeon how to use the walkie-talkie, and she asks about his code name, Big Boss. They sit and joke about what Mo Yeon's code name should be, and Si Jin says he resembles someone he finds beautiful, making the jealous doctor scoff. Just then, Myung Ju interrupts the moment, and jokes about being here to marry Yu Si Jin, making him nervous, because she is saying that in front of Mo Yeon. She then corrects it, saying she is here to join Medicube, and the two joke a bit about how she must have pulled some strings to be in this position now, instead of at the headquarters. Mo Yeon who has bad blood with the army female soldier, feels awkward and begins to walk out, with the package of walkie-talkies with her. Myung Ju stops her, telling her to shake hands, and to let bygones be bygones. But Mo Yeon refuses the greeting, saying she does not want to forget the past, where Myung Ju stole the doctor's crush. After she leaves, Si Jin asks what is up with the two of them, and Myung Ju changes the topic, instead teasing the soldier about meeting Mo Yeon on several occasions. Much to everyone's surprise, Mo Yeon is trying to listen in on their conversation, and seeing that, Kai Hoon joins her, which startles her. Inside the room, Myung Ju and Si Jin catch up, as he brings her a cup of coffee. They joke about Myung Ju marrying Si Jin, and he tells her not to joke like that. He then asks her if she has talked to Di Young, and further teases her, which makes her grit her teeth. Back in Korea, Seo Di Young is part of an intensive training, in which he trains newbies on how to shoot with a gun successfully. He is training the special forces, and even puts himself in danger. After the training, he reports to Myung Ju's father, who praises him for being a legendary instructor. The father then asks about Myung Ju, and Di Young makes it certain that he shares the father's thoughts, not because he does not like his daughter, but because he knows that he is sincere in his worry for his daughter, and his sincere disapproval of Di Young. As he is walking away from the office, he remembers Myung Ju's words to him, that she wrote in her letter, in which she apologizes for still loving him. Myung Ju who is trying to call him, does not get answered, and Kai Hoon approaches the woman, asking about being in the army, because he will have to go soon. His elaborate questions, make her ask him if he is flirting with her, but he says she is not that pretty. Mo Yeon comes from behind, patting Kai Hoon's behind, and praising him for saying that, and soon after a small funny spat, Myung Ju leaves, saying she is busy. The medical team have a meeting and after it, Mo Yeon plays around with the walkie-talkie, talking to another staff about lunch. Si Jin comes up from behind, saying he needs to talk to her, and calls her beauty, which is her code name. The medical staff get up quickly and leave, leaving the two alone. Mo Yeon gets up as well, saying that Si Jin's fiancé will not like him calling her a beauty. She leaves quickly, as Si Jin laughs. Meanwhile, Daniel fixes the car successfully, with his fiancé watching him dreamily. At the base, the doctors play around with the walkie-talkies, and Si Jin listens in, chuckling at the immaturity. He overhears Mo Yeon singing a patriotic song in the walkie-talkie, and gets a faraway look in his eyes. The next morning, the soldiers have set up a table full of food, and Mo Yeon asks what is the occasion. She is notified that Captain Yu will soon be deployed, and she is left surprised. Later at night, Mo Yeon sits outside, angry at the fact that Si Jin never told her that he is leaving soon. Si Jin soon asks to talk to her, and as they stand together under the night sky, he says he tried to tell her he would be leaving, but she ran away from him last time. Mo Yeon says he should have run after her in that case. He asks if her mind is still conflicted about them, and she does not answer, that means this is her reply to him. He asks if he should apologize for the kiss, or if he should confess his feelings to her. They stare at each other with melancholic eyes. Time seems to have frozen, but soon Mo Yeon breaks the silence. She tells Si Jin that he is amazing, but dangerous. She says that every time their eyes met, she has been charmed, but then she remembers all the times he has refused to tell her anything about himself. She wishes they had more time to sort out these feelings, so she can think about whether she should date this amazing man. But somehow, Yu Si Jin always has to leave soon, and Mo Yeon cannot even ask him to stay, which makes her feel like a fool, and makes her resent him. She asks the man to apologize, because she will accept it. He stands up straight, apologizing and asks her to take care of herself, before saluting and walking away. Mo Yeon sits alone in her tent, and lights a candle, deep in thought, while Si Jin is also in bed, deep in thought. The next morning, Mo Yeon wakes up to a fresh day, and looks for Si Jin among the jogging soldiers, but to her dismay, he is not there. From behind her, Gi Baeum informs her, that Si Jin has already left, using a civilian flight. Mo Yeon thinks to herself, how heartless the soldier is. He did not go after saying a proper goodbye. Back in Korea, Si Jin meets his father, who is also a sergeant general. He is supposed to have his retirement ceremony. The father wishes Si Jin became a lawyer instead, but Si Jin, like always, jokes around, wishing he had more brains. The father is obviously very proud of his son, 
And as it is time to get their picture together, Si Jin carries the photo of his late mother as he and his father get the picture taken. Meanwhile, the harsh Sergeant Seo Di Young is the captain of a merciless training of the soldiers, as they scream out because of the difficult workout. He has the soldiers lift him as well, which is hilarious, as he is already healthy, but the man shows the soldiers tough love. Out of nowhere, Yu Si Jin joins the training, and Di Young asks the soldiers to look at the flexibility of the Alpha Captain, as he uses his body to maneuver himself around the training area. Finally reaching his friend, who asks him why he is here so soon, Si Jin says he missed the man, and could not resist coming back. Later, they sit together and have a drink as Di Young asks Si Jin how his father's retirement ceremony went. Suddenly, there are three soldiers who enter the bar, and Seo Di Young quickly tries to hide himself. Si Jin asks why, and the young trainer says that these are the guys he trained brutally and told them to fight him if they ever met outside. What's hilarious is that the strong soldier who can probably beat these juniors to a pulp is hiding himself as if he cannot fight. Unfortunately, the juniors recognize him, and as they walk menacingly towards the two men, they make a run for it, landing on the ground floor of the bar. But however, it is their bad luck that there are several other army soldiers who trained under the watchful eye of C.O.D. Young. And since they are outside of training, all of them are ready to pounce on the man for what harsh training he put them through. Even though the two friends may get beat up, it is still a heartwarming display of their friendship as they evade the soldiers together and run for their lives, jumping from the building and landing swiftly on the streets from where they make a run for it. After running for a while, they finally find a spot to hide as the angry soldiers run past them. They hold in their breath and finally let it out, after they are sure no one will catch them. The two friends catch their breaths as Si Jin fills his friend in on how wrongly it went with Dr. Kang Mo Yon. He says he thinks about her, but he will get over her soon. Di Young gets up, saying that this is his neighborhood, and that he should leave, and says bye to his friend before leaving. On the way back, he gets a call from Myung Ju, and instead of ignoring it, he picks up. Myung Ju is surprised that he actually picked up, and she asks why he picked up, if something is wrong. But Seo Di Young does not talk at all, it is like he cannot make himself say a single word to her, because he already knows that her father has disapproved of him. Myung Ju understands that he will not talk, so she tells him to just listen to her. She tells him little things, like the fact that she is healthy and that she still misses him. She speaks lightheartedly as he listens with a gentle look in his eyes. Di Young's hands quiver as Myung Ju talks about how she has no pride when it comes to him, because he has shown her so much love in the past. He reminisces about the time they dated, when he was so happy. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon talks to her friend, who asks what happened with her in Si Jin. Mo Yeon says she regrets letting him go, that she should have ran after him, and now he probably thinks that she is not worth the effort. Si Jin who is in Korea, rides the bus that has Mo Yeon's poster, his thoughts revolving around her. He goes to a game place, where he plays pool alone, but is soon approached by Di Young. Si Jin wears a quirky expression, as he takes pictures of Di Young, and sends them to Myung Ju, who looks at the one she loves with heart-filled eyes. Back in Yuruk, the medical staff washes up the local children. When she is approached by Blakey, who has drawn a picture of her in Si Jin. She remembers the time she went to lecture the children about sanitation with the soldier. Si Jin sits alone, he has made a camp, and enjoys the silence and peace, but soon he calls Di Young, saying he is bored, but the trainer is busy and hangs up. With nothing to do, Si Jin's thoughts drift back to Mo Yeon, as he remembers what she said to him, when they went to the beach, how she gave him the rock he gave to her, and how she told him to test, if he will really come back to Yuruk because of the rock. Mo Yeon stands on top of a cliff in Yuruk, looking down at the beach she visited with Si Jin. Daniel comes to see her with the car she broke, and they talk a bit, before the doctor gives him an envelope with some money, but he tells her to pay him in installments, through a plan, where all her money would go to charity, and she chuckles a bit, agreeing. It seems it is finally time for Mo Yeon to go, that's why he is here to say goodbye to the pretty doctor. Mo Yeon is now at the base, checking on all the medicines, when she is approached by Myung Ju. Her old rival asks blatantly if she likes Si Jin, and Mo Yeon turns her entire body towards the soldier in surprise, making her answer obvious. Just then, Si Jin calls Myung Ju, and having had enough of his teasing, she teases him back, making Si Jin clear his throat, before he starts talking about Di Young again. Soon, the doctor hangs up, and Mo Yeon is called to get a group photo taken with her group. The soldiers have come up with a helicopter ride that will transport the doctors to Yurok Airport in only 30 minutes, and Mo Yeon rides it with some of her group mates, looking nostalgically at the island. However, back in Yurok, all the birds fly up, as a sudden explosion takes place. Meanwhile, the chief manager of the plant construction steals a stash of diamonds, with one of the workers watching as he pretends to sleep. The worker goes to the construction site, and his senior, the kind old manager, puts his own helmet on the young worker's head. Suddenly, everything starts shaking. It's an earthquake. All the buildings seem to fall apart, and everything is in sudden chaos, as Myung Ju runs to save the rest of the medical staff that were due to leave soon. 
On the construction site, several workers lose their lives, as the manager and the worker with the helmet run to get outside. But the manager is hit with rubble from above, knocking the old man down. The corrupt chief manager saves himself by pushing workers in the chaos, and Mo Yeon who is in the helicopter, stares below at the destruction, unable to understand what is going on all of a sudden. In Korea, the news is filled with the earthquake in Yuruk, and Si Jin quickly calls to find out about the construction site, fearing the worst. In the hospital, Kai Hoon's pregnant wife cries at the thought of her young husband being a part of the devastating earthquake. The airport is flocked with people who run to get out of Yuruk. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon is in a heated argument with Sergeant Choi, who keeps telling her to get on board as per order, but she and some others have colleagues stuck in the earthquake and wish to help with the affected. The CEO of Heesung, who is worried about all the medical staff he sent to Yuruk, pressures the lieutenant general about their safety. He assures him that the army has sent their most trained soldiers on site, including Si Jin and Di Young. Back in Yuruk, Mo Yeon, Sang Hyun, and other doctors have come back to the medical camp, where they are informed of the news that the construction plant has fallen. They get in an ambulance and as soon as possible make a run for it. The sight they are met with is truly heartbreaking. The workers are sprawled on the floor, some passed away, some on the verge, and some carrying each other. Mo Yeon takes charge, ordering all the medical staff on what they should do, and they get to work to save whoever they can save. The pretty doctor breaks the heels of her shoes so that she can run faster. As the doctors get to work to save the construction workers, the chief manager tries to get a soldier to get something from his fallen office, but no one pays the greedy man any mind. Inside the fallen building, manager Ko is stuck under the heavy bricks as he screams out for help. What's more terrifying is that there is a worker who has iron impaled inside him, as he stands, crying out for help as well. Kai Hoon performs CPR on a patient, but Mo Yeon puts a black label on him, pronouncing him lifeless so that the empathetic Kai Hoon can stop with the CPR. The passing away of a patient has obviously affected him in the worst way possible as he sobs. He is slapped by Sang Hyun, who tells him to get a hold of himself and to stop acting whiny. Kai Hoon, who is demotivated after what just happened, is motivated again by Sang Hyun as the younger man sobs in pain. Mo Yeon begs him to get a hold of himself, and amidst sobbing, Kai Hoon announces the time of the man's passing and closes his eyes as the doctors around him let out tears as well before getting back to work. It is now nighttime, and Mo Yeon and the rest of the doctors continue to work hard in the chaos, helping patients. This incident is eye-opening for the doctor, who thought she only wanted to make money, but she remembers her oath as a doctor when she promised to serve people. The death toll is now at 14, and keeps increasing. The helicopter which has Si Jin and Di Young, arrives at the scene finally, and the soldiers come down using a rope. As Hei walk closer, Mo Yeon sees with teary eyes, as Si Jin is back, he also stares at her, probably thankful that she is safe. She is soon called by another worker, who needs her help, and Si Jin gets busy with the soldiers. He asks if anyone is hurt, and thanks them for their hard work. He tells the soldiers that they will get to work with the inside of the construction site, and he orders them not to get hurt, before dismissing them. Ji Young looks around to see Myung Ju running to him, and he simply tells her that he worried for her and is thankful she is safe. As he is walking to his duty, Myung Ju tells him not to get hurt under any circumstance, that it is an order. They face each other, saluting. Mo Yeon, after tending to some more patients, goes to a secluded spot to tie the shoelaces of the shoes that were given to her by a construction worker, and surprisingly, Si Jin comes to her, bending down and tying the laces for her. They face each other, yet again, midst the chaos and destruction. Si Jin says he regrets leaving without saying goodbye, and then tells her to be careful, because he cannot always be present. She tells him likewise, and the two walk away from each other, back to their duties. The next morning, the Tebek rescue squad goes into the destroyed building, yelling for any survivors, but they get no reply. Si Jin assures the soldiers that there must be people in this area of the demolition. The chief manager, who only cares about his treasures that are hidden in his destroyed office, berates the soldiers for being scared of a bunch of rocks, but Seo Di Young strictly tells him that the building he wants to go in is far more dangerous than the one they are trying to get into right now. Finally, the team gets some sort of sound from within the building, raising hopes that there are survivors. Inside, the worker who was impaled with metal hits the rod with a rock weakly, saying it hurts. Manager Ko assures him that people will be coming soon as he too is beneath several rocks. They hear a few workers calling out to them, raising their hopes. The workers, who are also trapped in the upper floor, wait for the rescue team to come. Outside, the soldiers discuss the problem they face, raising the concrete up to create an opening. And what's more stressful is that the chief manager keeps standing by them, telling them to do this and that, on his orders. He is finally told to leave the site, and is taken away by some soldiers. Si Jin finally opens the map, and seriously discusses with Di Young. They finally come up with a plan, using water-filled airbags, which will create an opening for one person to get through. Mo Yeon still treats patients when she gets walkie-talkies from Gi Baeum, who tells her to go on to Channel 3, where Daniel is. He asks her if he can use her OR at MediCube. 
See Jin is finally able to crawl into the tiny space, created by the airbag. It is a very difficult task, but he slowly but surely manages to save the workers that were stuck on the upper floors. The construction employees come outside, where the doctors help them immediately. Mo Yeon runs to Myung Ju and the nurse as they are treating a weak patient, who has lost his consciousness. Mo Yeon beats on his chest as a final resort to get a pulse going, and then they discuss about having to do surgery on the patient immediately. Since he cannot be transported to Medicube, they decide to do the surgery among the chaos and dust, which is risky on its own. Kai Hoon is dealing with another patient, but as he is about to give her anesthesia, she tells him not to, because she is pregnant, and he has to fix her dislocated leg, without numbing the area, which is extremely painful. There are news reporters from the US, and Dr. Song uses this chance to have the reporters give him a ride to Medicube. Meanwhile, Mo Yeo needs blood type ab for the surgery they are performing out in the open, and Gi Baeum volunteers. Si Jin runs up to Mo Yeon and takes her inside the destruction site, where manager Ko is stuck. Seeing him, she asks if he can feel his leg, but he jokes about in that situation. She also takes a look at the impaled patient, and asks Si Jin to cut the iron from behind, but he asks to talk to her in private. Si Jin tells her that the metal rod and the concrete on top of manager Ko are connected. That means, if they manage to save one person, the other one will have to die. The rescue procedures are usually followed, saying that the person the doctor feels is worth saving has to be saved. This is significant pressure for Mo Yeon, who will have to decide. The doctor thinks for a moment, and the soldier tells her to take about 20 minutes, but soon she finds out that there is no time. Chief manager comes in again, and pressures Si Jin into opening his office door again. But Si Jin tries ignoring the obvious corrupt and selfish boss. Having had enough, Si Jin starts speaking disrespectfully to the man, and gives him a reality check. Suddenly, there is a sudden commotion, and the rocks in the building begin to fall. Regardless of their spat, Si Jin saves the chief manager, and has a huge rod fall on his own back. Mo Yeon alerts the manager that once the rocks lift off him, it will be painful for his legs. The wise manager knows the situation, that only one of the workers will make it out. It makes Mo Yeon let out tears. Meanwhile, the other group of soldiers that have Di Young go to a weak part of the building, and Di Young falls through the building. Luckily, he does not sustain big injuries. Mo Yeon comes to Si Jin, telling him of the condition of both patients, and then asks Si Jin what he would do, but he wants her to decide, because she is the doctor. He tells her that they are facing a problem, and there is no decision that is best. He assures her stoically that she is doing her best. What she needs to do is make a diagnosis and go ahead with her decision, which is difficult for the kind-hearted Mo Yeon, but she is also determined so she makes her final decision. The next scene is the impaled patient getting rushed into Medicube. He is the one who was saved. He is taken into the OR and given anesthesia, and Mo Yeon and Dr. Song work to get the metal rod out, using a surgical procedure. Manager Ko has already passed away now. His body is taken outside, and paid respect to, as Si Jin salutes the late man with respect. Things seem to be getting a little better, as the patients who underwent surgery seem to be settling down. At long last, the actual rescue team arrives, and the soldiers on duty finally get to rest. Di Young and Myung Ju ride the truck together, going to their base to rest. Back in Korea, Myung Ju's father talks to Si Jin's father, making it obvious that he favors the young man a lot. The medical staff in Korea are also informed of the Yuruk group's safety, making them all breathe sighs of relief. In Yuruk, Lee Kai Hoon sits alone, the after effects of the entire calamity hitting him. Dr. Song comes to him and asks him if he is alright. Kai Hoon does not answer and smiles weakly, sighing. Inside Medicube, the chief manager barges into the room and asks for a doctor. He once again says that he is the chief manager and wants to get a drip of vitamins. Han Yai, the upfront doctor, talks in her walkie-talkie, describing the condition of the useless man, until he is ignored. He begins to threaten her, but she walks away after paying him no mind. Si Jin and Di Young discuss the food shortages, but they are happy to see that the bar they go to in town has brought a truck over and the pretty bartender opens cartons full of sandwiches. The soldiers all eat, while being lectured by Si Jin, how rescue squads will still be dispatched, and that the soldiers should not think about all that happened today. Later, Di Young is approached by Myung Ju, who wipes his sweat from his face quietly. She asks him if he was ordered to come to Yuruk by her father, but the young commander says it was his duty. He then asks her to call her father, but she ignores it, and asks him if he cared if she got hurt in the destruction. Di Young hugs Myung Ju tightly, not able to bear the distance, and she hugs back willingly, arms around him, as they share a sweet moment. Han Yai is sterilizing medical equipment in boiling water when she is approached by her husband, Dr. Song. The hot and cold couple have a conversation, where the male doctor tells her the password of a hidden file on his laptop. The older woman, assuming the worst, tells him to delete the folder. Mo Yeon takes a round in Medicube, asking about every doctor's condition. She checks on the pregnant patient, who has Kai Hoon's phone, and is listening to classical music from his phone. Mo Yeon hands the boots she was given by a worker back to him, and earnestly thanks him, he smiles back. 
There are a total of 18 incidents of passing away in the construction site, and approximately 40 injured. The staff lights candles to honor the gone. Moyon looks at the blackboard and looks away in sadness. As she is walking away, Yu Si Jin looks at what she was looking at silently. Moyon walks through the destruction and imagines the workers, who used to be so lively when working, especially manager Ko, who used to smile so wide. Moyon finally lets the tears fall, unable to control the sadness she feels for the poor departed souls. She sobs loudly as Si Jin watches her from behind sadly. A soldier comes to Si Jin and reminds him that he hurt his shoulder. Si Jin takes his jacket off and the cut he got on his back is deep. Moyon approaches him and tells him she will give him stitches. As she tends to him, they share a small conversation, and Si Jin says he is thankful to her for being present, and she tells him she feels the same way about him being here. Si Jin genuinely tells her he wants her to be okay, and she says that he should do what he does best, joke. Without looking at her, he says she looked pretty all day, and then whispers to himself how he missed her and how he kept thinking of her. He says he tried everything, but he could not help but miss her. Part 8. Si Jin lowly speaks how he tried to do everything, physically exhaust himself, drink, but he could not forget Mo Yon. The soldier then asks the woman to think about him carefully, and then gets up, telling her to get some rest. Si Jin says he is going to the base to report on the incident, and the doctor tells him she wants to go there as well, to make a call. At the base, Si Jin watches as Mo Yon stares at the phone unsurely, and soon she calls someone. It seems she has called manager Ko's family and wants to relay his last message to his family. He talked of his wife and how they spent time looking at each other's pictures, more than they saw each other in real life. Mo Yeon talks of the compensation his wife will receive and how manager Ko said he doesn't want his wife to be alone for a long time. Han Yai sees her husband sitting alone and offers him a drink, congratulating him for working hard. In his hand, there is a ring. He says it's from one of the patients he worked on. The two of them go inside and offer the ring to the patient who receives it. Outside, Daniel and EHWA are fixing a car when she tells him to please comply with the American reporters because she already offered them interviews in exchange for their blood for the patients. Daniel jokes about without paying her much mind, maybe because he does not want to do any interviews. The doctors who pass him by go inside and gossip about him, calling him a relief doctor of some sort with a handsome face, but Kai Hoon soon recognizes the man, Dr. Daniel who is the son of a very rich man, but he works in NGOs. Mo Yon is still at the base, she walks outside, sobbing after talking to the manager's family. Si Jin follows behind her, and even though she tells her not to look at her crying face, he comes in front of her. She asks if there is any shady place nearby, and he jokes a little, before saying she did a good job today. Mo Yon doesn't reply, she just keeps sobbing. The soldier asks her to look at him, and he points towards the sky, which has numerous stars shining. Mo Yon calls them shameless for shining so bright, even though so much happened, and Si Jin says he thought it would comfort her. Mo Yon says she has received consolation from him already, and then thanks him for being present all throughout the day. They smile at each other before the pretty doctor sighs and looks towards the sky again. Somewhere else, Argus has the chief manager with a foot on his neck. He has passed the deadline to get the dangerous man the diamonds. He threatens the man to get him the small package before tomorrow. Inside the chaos of the fallen building, Kang Min Yi, another construction worker who witnessed the scene of the chief manager smuggling diamonds, lays in a heap on the floor with debris over his tired body. At first he weakly groans for help, but the lazy man decides that that is too much work and he should just go to eternal sleep. But as he looks towards the side, he remembers manager Ko's nagging at him for the helmet and talks to himself for the manager to come save him. The next morning, the site where the office lies is open, fortunately for the chief manager, but before they can create a big opening, Di Young stops the machinery and orders the soldiers to go and search for more survivors, because there are about three people still missing. The soldiers go inside, followed by a few medical staff, including Kai Hoon. The young doctor searches among the ruckus, and finally is able to see a young man through some glass, it's Min Yi. Just as he is about to help the young worker, there is an aftershock in the building, as the rocks begin to collapse again. Kai Hoon fumbles to grab the worker, but a rock hits his hand, injuring him, and he drops Min Yi's hands, he falls back into the destruction. The scared doctor runs outside for his life, and once out, he shakes and shiver uncontrollably, unable to hear anything from the trauma. As soon as he recovers, he tells one of the soldiers that there is a person inside the building, a Korean. Di Young is outside again, and he tells Gi Bam to blow the whistle as soon as he sees the building topple over. Myung Ju, who is there too, puts a compression bandage on the soldier for his injuries. The survivor is finally noticed, and Di Young sets out to save the man. Si Jin and Mo Yeon who have just arrived to the scene, unpack the medical kits, and Si Jin goes in. The worker is given an IV drip by Si Jin, and Di Young goes outside to get another pump to lift the rocks. Min Yi asks Si Jin how long he has been stuck in here, and if many people died, Si Jin answers comfortingly how they managed to save a lot of people as well. Min Yi suddenly says that he feels itchy all over, and Si Jin quickly checks his neck, speaking in his walkie-talkie to Mo Yon, 
who patiently tells him that the patient might be allergic to NSAID. She tells him to double the IV input and give Seo De Young a counter medicine to combat the allergy, assuring them that the patient will be fine. But soon, the ground begins shaking again. Neong Ju checks the radio waves, it's not an aftershock, so what is it? The chief manager has taken control of the big machinery outside, and has taken it upon himself to pave a way to his own office. This is bad for Si Jin and Min Yi, who are still inside the building. It will surely collapse if the fallen building gets pushed around. A rock falls on top of Si Jin, as he protects Min Yi with his body. Outside, Myung Ju tries reaching Si Jin, but she looks towards Mo Yeon, saying they have lost contact already. Di Young orders his soldier to catch the chief manager, they will surely straighten him out later. Inside the building, Min Yi who has an unconscious Si Jin on top of him, thinks he is dead. But the soldier soon wakes up, telling the young worker not to call him an old man. The Alpha team are ready to go inside, and Myung Ju warns Di Young that it will be dangerous, more than ever now. Outside, Myung Ju keeps trying to reach Big Boss, to no avail. She assures Mo Yeon that they will get him. The doctor has her face down, and ties her shoelaces, saying she is ready to run. Inside, Si Jin tells Min Yi about the woman he likes, and how he has gotten rejected so many times. Si Jin asks for Min Yi's arm, and when asked what he is doing, the soldier says he is writing a letter, in case only the worker gets out of here alive. They hear the stones rumbling again, and soon, Di Young pushes through, saving the two. Once Min Yi is outside, Kai Hoon looks at him from afar, guilty for the way he ran instead of saving the patient. The patient is taken out, where he meets Mo Yeon, who notices the medical chart on his forearm, reminding her of her first encounter with Si Jin. The soldier walks towards Mo Yeon, who stares at him silently. The funny man asks for a stretcher for himself, saying he just survived and needs care as well. He then asks Mo Yeon to treat him. The chief manager is brought in, and he shamelessly screams at the soldiers, showing them how everyone is fine. Unable to handle his anger any longer, Seo Di Young rushes forward, and punches the man, whose lip starts bleeding. Seeing the fight, Si Jin grins. Back at Medicube, in the silence and calmness, Mo Yeon treats Si Jin's injury silently. She does not speak a word to him, even when he is joking. She finally talks, asking why he is joking if he almost died. She then says that she was really worried about him. Si Jin tells her that he trusted she would save him. That's why he went into the ruckus. The lieutenant is here to see the soldiers, but Mo Yeon orders Si Jin to stay put where he is, because a patient cannot go to meet his boss in this condition. She asks Gi Bam to call the lieutenant over here, if he wants to meet Si Jin. The boss comes in, and asks Si Jin if he is badly hurt, and Mo Yeon pushes the conversation saying he is, that scares Si Jin, and he agrees with her as well. The lieutenant also informs Mo Yeon, that there will be a flight for the medical staff, leaving after two days, and she should come up with a list of names, who are going back to Korea. The chief manager barges in, and asks to talk to the lieutenant. In his office, he says he will sue all the soldiers for hitting him, and will make sure they are stripped off their uniforms. The lieutenant obviously answers patiently, but he also mentions charging the chief manager for attempted murder and other allegations. The lieutenant still asks the soldiers to run 100 laps around the base, asking Si Jin to run 200 after his IV drip, which hilariously makes the soldier stand upright, as if he is not even injured. As the soldiers run, they joke around a bit, before Si Jin sees Mo Yeon standing by the side. He excuses himself, and goes to the silent doctor. She is obviously angry at him, for risking his life. She hands him the medicine, he has to take later. Mo Yeon tells him that the team he is in is very unfair, but Si Jin says it is proof that rules exist. She wishes he was more than a soldier, but Si Jin ignores how hurt she feels, instead thanking her again for saving him. Later Mo Yeon gathers the medical team, and informs them of their departure soon. She thanks them for going above and beyond in this difficult situation, and assures them, that they do not have to feel guilty, if they want to leave. However, there are some doctors and nurses, who are ready to willingly give up their seats for patients, who deserve to go back. Lee Kai Hoon is absent from the meeting. He is instead at Medicube, looking at Min Yi with guilt for leaving him behind. Min Yi notices him stops, the poor doctor from walking away. Kai Hoon is berated for not being a good doctor, because he left a patient alone in times of need. Later on, Kang Mo Yeon finds the young resident doctor, telling him he did a great thing already. She notifies him that their flight is ready, and that he should go be with his wife, and he replies sadly. Mo Yeon notices Kai Hoon's bruised hand, he has not even gotten treated out of guilt. Min Yi searches around Medicube for Manager Ko, and he soon sees the old man's name on a list of deaths. He cries out, and Kai Hoon who is secretly listening sobs as well. The next day, Si Jin talks to the soldiers and the medical staff about the hardships they all faced, and how the search for survivors will now end. They end the speech by saluting for the departed. The medical staff sit and eat their lunches as they talk about how this situation was different from the deaths they face at the hospital. Suddenly, the signals come back on, and everyone gets busy on their phones, answering their loved ones' calls. Mo Yeon is on call with her best friend, who tells her to come back, and then asks what Kai Hoon is doing because he won't answer his wife's call. 
Kai Hoon sits alone, crying silently as he cannot bring himself to talk to his wife. Han Yai and the nurse gush over Daniel's charm and his handsome face. Seeing them like this, Dr. Song rushes to them in jealousy and dismisses all of them. Si Jin and Di Young sit together when Myung Ju walks to them, talking to Si Jin. But as she sees Di Young there, she gets quiet. Di Young seems to know that her father likes Si Jin and grows jealous at the fact. Si Jin who does not want any part in this and rushes out of the room, leaving the two lovebirds alone. Daniel has fixed all the speakers around Medicube, and Mo Yeon puts on songs from her phone so the patients can hear something nice. Myung Ju, who is alone with Di Young, thinks the situation they are in is romantic, and she asks him to do something, as in kiss her. The stoic Di Young teases her by leaving, saying he has to do roll call. Si Jin goes to the recording room, where Daniel is sitting. He asks what song will play next. To everyone's surprise, the recording that Mo Yeon made of her voice when she was falling off the cliff starts playing. It goes around all the speaker, the crying voice of the head doctor. What's more surprising is that in the recording, Mo Yeon is confessing her feelings for Si Jin. Mo Yeon runs to the recording room in an attempt to stop the embarrassing recording. Mo Yeon makes a run for it as everyone around the base hears the message she recorded when she thought she would not survive. Si Jin hears it too, smiling a bit at the incidental confession of her love in the message. Mo Yeon runs into the room and tries pausing the audio. She takes her phone and runs off immediately. Daniel looks towards Si Jin with a teasing expression, saying that this audio might change a lot of things for him. Si Jin impressively jumps from the window, using his special training in the core, to land safely onto the ground. Before opening up the main gate of the building, Mo Yeon is trying to run from. She stops dead in her tracks, staring at him incredulously for being so quick on his feet, before putting up baseless arguments. She asks angrily why he heard her recording, the question does not seem to make sense, because she is the one who put it on speakers, accidentally, and it makes Si Jin smile, he says it was too loud, and then laughs at her. Si Jin walks towards her, repeating the fact that she just confessed to him, but the shy doctor tries running away. He does not let her though, and says that she rejected him so many times, so now he has to be sure that this is a confession for him. Mo Yeon sighs, and then seriously says she will talk to him once he leaves her arm, which he is holding. But when he lets go, Mo Yeon makes a run for it, leaving a very entertained Si Jin, who laughs at the doctor's cuteness. Outside, Dr. Song and Han Yai are taking a walk after listening to the recording, talking about how love can blossom, even in the worst of conditions. Dr. Song says they should live their life to the fullest as well, that they should kiss. But Yai runs away from the man. The soldiers sit by the building outside, and Sergeant Choi gives money to two other soldiers. It seems like they bet on Si Jin's relationship with Dr. Kang. Choi says he does not like the pretty doctor, because she makes good money, and is beautiful, so she has no reason to date a soldier. Mo Yeon goes into the meeting with the medical staff, but they're not in the mood to talk business, instead they tease her about her confession, which makes Mo Yeon nervous, and she tells everyone to focus on the meeting at hand. Everyone is having a good time, all except one person, Lee Kai Hoon, who sits in silence among his peers. Later, he goes to check Min Yi's blood pressure, but the annoying worker loudly asks Dr. Song if he can change doctors. Seeing the situation, the doctor comes up to the patient and tells him that he cannot change his doctor to his liking and that he should get treated if he wants to get better. With shaky hands, Kai Hoon reads aloud his blood pressure before leaving the disgruntled, angry young man. Mo Yeon walks outside Medicube, but when she sees soldiers pass by, she quickly hides her face and pretends to stretch. She gets approached by Myung Ju, who out loud says that the doctor is embarrassed because of the confession. Mo Yeon gets serious and asks if she can ask a question. She asks if Myung Ju ever gets worried for her boyfriend, Di Young. Whether questions like are you safe come to her mind because of the dangerous and risky job. Myung Ju tells the doctor what the special forces do, but she says she is fine with loving a man like him, because at least they are under the same sky. Myung Ju says she is blinded by love, and then leaves Mo Yeon in her thoughts. She goes to see Jin, who is sitting in anguish, with a stone he picked up from the beach, tossing it around. The female soldier grabs hold of the rock, and asks what is bothering the captain, who asks her the same question as Mo Yeon. Myung Ju starts teasing him with the rock, and as she is about to run away, her back hits Di Young who stops her from leaving in anger because he would not even hug her when they were alone. She calls him an idiot before handing Si Jin his rock back and walking away. Si Jin teases Di Young about being an idiot before walking off smugly. The next morning, the medical staff stand and watch as the soldiers jog together all sweaty. They enjoy the view, but the nurse teases Mo Yeon with Si Jin's name, which makes her run. Obviously, the young doctor is shy and gullible. Mo Yeon runs by a building and stops to take some rest, but much to her surprise, Si Jin is already standing by the window, watching her with a glint in his eyes. She tells him he scared her and the tries running away, but the soldier stops her, telling her not to run away from him like this. He tells her she should not think of her confession as a defeat, 
because it has only made him like her more. Inside the soldiers' quarters, Yewa is giving the soldiers acupuncture, but when Gi Baim asks her if she is qualified, she tells them she only learned how to do this by watching her dad, and does not hold a qualification. This scares the soldiers, and they try getting up, but she tells them they should not move, because their nerves might get messed up. Gi Baim asks where she is from, because her accent is different from theirs, and Yewa tells them, she is from Goryeo and half Korean. Gi Baim does not seem to understand what she is saying, and he just gets bonked on the head by the girl. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon and Si Jin head to a meeting regarding the UN. Si Jin asks how many boyfriends the doctor has had, and as she is thinking about it, the tire hits something, which makes it explode. The vehicle twists and turns before stopping. Si Jin sees what caused it, and he says it was a mine. That the earthquake must have shifted them onto here. He tells Mo Yeon not to move, because they may be surrounded by the explosives. With no phone or radio reception, the two get out of the car, after grabbing a hold of red flags, to mark all the mines they find. Si Jin tests each step with a knife, before helping Mo Yeon take large steps to the safe ground. He flags all the mines one by one, and jokes with Mo Yeon. His jokes give her strength, and they move forward. After they have crossed the area, Mo Yeon sits on the ground, sighing in relief. Si Jin says she did a great job, and then asks for a lipstick. With the red color, he writes a warning sign, and attaches it by the mine so people can be careful. They keep walking, as Si Jin tells her they will probably get to their destination by tomorrow morning. Mo Yeon who is already tired grumbles about it, and then takes this chance to ask Si Jin how many women he has dated. But the smooth soldier does not answer, instead he points towards an oncoming truck. Mo Yeon tries to get a lift, but fails miserably. However, another truck arrives, and a farmer agrees to offering the two a ride. They sit in the back of the truck, as Mo Yeon thanks Si Jin for saving her. He jokes around a bit, before asking what Myung Ju said. Mo Yeon replies, and then Si Jin asks if she is going back to Korea, but she says she is not. Si Jin is surprised, but he states that it must not be because of him. Mo Yeon cuts him off and says that she is staying because of him, because she wants more time with him. She says aloud that she just confessed, and asks if she should apologize, but the soldier grabs her and kisses her in the moving vehicle. Back at the base, they part ways shyly, and Dr. Song and Ya Yi notice the hay on their hair, figuring out what must have happened. In another perspective, the chief manager of the Yuruk plant construction, gets out of the no trespassing zone with a black bag, and he falls in surprise to see, Argus and his men cornering him. He quickly shows them the bag with a safe inside, telling Argus that the diamonds are in here. Argus points his gun to the chief manager's head, ready to shoot. The man begs for his life, and Argus reminds him that he should only do as he tells him to. Back at Argus's base, he discovers that there are no diamonds in the safe, and he gets angry for being fooled. At Medicube, Jin young soo the chief manager complains about having neck pains, as an after-effect of the earthquake, and demands for a seat as a patient. The absurd demand is not met by Yae and myung Ju, who are rude to the proud man. When he starts screaming at them, Di Young arrives and drags him outside. Once there, he threatens the man, saying he can injure him however he wants so that he can be a patient. But Young Su is a scaredy cat, and he apologizes for his words quickly before he gets hurt. From behind, Kai Hoon comes up and offers his own seat to the chief manager. The next day, the greedy man sits in Kai Hoon's seat, remembering how he snuck in the destroyed Yuruk plant, as Mo Yeon bids her teammates, who are leaving, goodbye. The nurses and Han Yai bring it to the pretty doctor's attention that Kai Hoon has been acting very weird lately. He has not even changed his socks. Dr. Sung approaches. Kai Hoon is sitting alone by the cabinet of medicine and provides the young man with consolation in his own way. At first he jokes about Kai Hoon not wanting to go home, because his wife must have gotten fat. But then the conversation takes a serious turn, when Kai Hoon says he does not want to run away. Song asks if something is happening with Min Yi, but Kai Hoon says he will deal with these feelings alone, and if he cannot handle it, he will ask for help. At the Yuruk airport, the chief manager walks through security, while Argus's men search for him. He hides from them, until they supposedly leave. The men go back to Argus, and notify him that they cannot find the chief manager, but they still notified the authorities about him. Where Si Jin is, he uses a telescope with a gun to Ai Mo Yeon, who is washing her face and wiping it. He watches the lady with a smile on his face. Di Young comes up from behind, pointing out how weird Si Jin's actions are, he seems amused by his friend. On the radio, Di Young gets a yellow tiger signal, indicating that Myung Ju's father, the special forces commander is coming to visit the Yuruk base. Captain Si Jin alerts all the soldiers of the visit, and hilariously takes time to joke about how they always keep the storage and bathroom clean, even though it is obvious that they do not. The men get to work, scrubbing, cleaning and weeding the entire place out, as per the captain's instructions. However, the news reaches him, that the captain is instead holding a meeting with the UN somewhere else, and wants Si Jin to come along, with the head of the medical staff, Mo Yeon. The soldiers and Mo Yeon wait respectfully for the official to arrive. Si Jin chuckles when Mo Yeon keeps a hand over her heart, instead of saluting. Myung Ju's father borrows another deputy's office, and beckons Si Jin, Di Young, Myung Ju and Mo Yeon to join him. 
Once inside, he thanks Mo Yeon for her hard work and compliments her set of skills before dismissing her. She leaves after smiling at the older man. The three soldiers that remain look at the father who asks Si Jin if he is interested in Myung Ju, but the straightforward soldier clearly states that he has not looked at Myung Ju as a woman for the past seven years. He is also dismissed. The last two lovers that remain look at the chief with nervousness. The older man blatantly asks Myung Ju if she still likes Seo Di Young, and she says she does, but much to her surprise, Di Young, who previously listened to the father's resolve to not let him date the female soldier, now holds Myung Ju's hand and tells the chief that he will keep holding this hand no matter where he goes. She stares at her lover in surprise and leaves when her father tells her to leave. Alone in the room, the chief says the orders he gave to Di Young to stay away from his daughter was unjust. He approves the man dating his daughter but puts in his own condition. He says Di Young has to quit being a soldier and instead will work for Myung Ju's company and polish his skills. The older man tells the young man to think about this decision until his deployment ends. Mo Yeon and Si Jin are at a petrol pump and the doctor seems to be deep in thought. Si Jin asks her what she is thinking about, and she tells him that it does not make sense how he does not want to date Yoon Myung Ju, because the pretty soldier has everything, good looks, good body, and a good family. The jealous doctor cannot make sense of Si Jin's feelings, and he uses this time to kiss her to quiet her down. He goes around to the shop to pay for the petrol, and catches a little boy stealing medicine. The boy has rashes and pimples on his face, and Mo Yeon diagnoses him with measles, saying that it can spread, so they should go to the boy's village and commence a quarantine. Meanwhile, Seo Di Young approaches Myung Ju, who waited for him outside the building, and lets her know that her father has approved of them dating. He watches her smile and celebrate happily, but does not tell her of the condition her father has put on him. She cannot believe her father's decision and runs to give the man a call. Di Young watches her go with a smile, happy at her happiness. Mo Yeon and Si Jin drive to the little boy's village. It seems to be a little weird because the people hold an unwelcoming aura. Si Jin asks the base if they can confirm the GPS coordinates, but according to the base, they can't see any coordinates for the village on the GPS, nor is there supposed to be a village in that part of Yurok. Si Di Young orders a soldier to get a hold of the peacemaker doctor, because most likely, he will know about the weird village. In the village, Si Jin Jin asks how long it has been since the children have been sick, but none of the villagers answer. From behind, a young girl comes up and speaks in English. She tells them that the future of the children of this village is bleak. She says she will cooperate, but they have to help her out of there. At the base, Daniel tells C.O.D. Young that this is known as a phantom village, and war orphans stay here, controlled by gangs, who sell people and kidnap the kids. C. Jin is notified of this, and as he is on call, he sees Argus in a car. C. Jin stares wide-eyed, understanding the entire picture, and then runs to the village. Meanwhile, Argus gets to the village and Mo Yeon walks to him, asking him if she can take the kids to Medicube. C. Jin rushes to him, and hides Mo Yeon behind himself. He tells Mo Yeon that this is Captain Ryan, the one he saved all these years ago. Argus sees Mo Yeon and realizes who she is. But from behind him, the village girl shoots at him, hitting Argus in the stomach. He drops to the floor, grunting. Si Jin pulls out his gun, but does not shoot. Mo Yeon who is in a dilemma is unsure if she should save the bad guy, but Si Jin tells her to do her job as a doctor. Argus reaches for his gun, but is unable to, instead he faints. Mo Yeon sees he has a hemorrhage, and tells Si Jin. Si Jin tells Argus's men to bring him inside, and Mo Yeon takes the bullet out of his body without giving him painkillers, making it hurt a lot. After the treatment, she tells him to go, and as he moves forward to take the village girl, Si Jin stops him. The thugs begrudgingly leave. A while later, the children of the village are taken to Medicube and treated. Dr. Song tells Mo Yeon to wash the blood off her hands. She goes outside and washes up, remembering Argus's face and words to her. Nurse Choi runs up to Mo Yeon, telling her that the girl they brought back wants to leave. Mo Yeon asks the girl to see her and gives her food and milk, but the girl angrily throws the milk aside, asking why the doctor saved Argus. Mo Yeon talks patiently to the traumatized girl and pours her another glass of milk. Back in Korea, the hospital staff that returned tells his co-workers of the horrible sights of the destruction, when Kai Hoon's wife rushes to them, asking why Kai Hoon is not here. She thinks he is cheating on her. At the Yuruk Medicube, Mo Yeon and Myung Ju stock up on supplies while chatting away. The measles situation has been controlled by the soldiers, who will be heading out to the village soon. Mo Yeon, who is weirdly friendly with her ex-enemy, claims she is more of an honorable person than the soldier. She wishes her a safe trip and leaves. The next day, Myung Ju and Di Young travel to the village for civil affairs, but Myung Ju is happy with the fact that she gets to be in a car with her man. He asks how she can be happy with an average-looking man like him, but she says he is very handsome and that he should show his face to her every morning from now on. 
He then asks what she would do if she could do something, and the smart girl catches on quickly that he is worried, but she thinks little of it and tells him she likes him the way he is. When they arrive at the village, there is no one there. It has been deserted. At the base, Argus's case is brought up and discussed, and the chief tells Si Jin not to get involved anymore because it may cause a fuss. At the base, Si Jin solemnly tells his friend Di Young that he must not include himself in matters concerning Argus any longer. He sits outside alone and is approached by Mo Yeon, who hands him a cup of coffee and sits with him. The lighthearted doctor makes the soldier feel better in no time, and they share a romantic moment where Si Jin ties up the girl's hair. Soon, she leaves after she is alerted that there are packages that have arrived from Korea. Mo Yeon takes some of them from Yae, the packages for the soldiers, and says she will deliver them herself. Once she is gone, Dr. Song rushes in, opening his parcel and pulling out size 6 shoes that he ordered for Yae. She reminds him that she is a size 7, but after he leaves, she blushes at his thoughtfulness. Mo Yeon speaks in her walkie-talkie about the parcel for Seo Di Young and Si Jin which seems to be from a girl. Hearing her name, the two soldiers dramatically make a run for it before Mo Yeon can open the parcel. Myung Ju also overhears the conversation and angrily walks to where Mo Yeon is. The young doctor is very curious as to what can be inside the parcel, and she shakes it, trying to find out. Myungju rushes up and takes the box from Mo Yeon, opening it, and pulls out a photo of the two male soldiers sitting with two young women. The two girls angrily look at the boys, who have just arrived, and they go through ferocious questioning. Ji Young throws Si Jin under the bus, saying that he arranged a blind date for the commander, and then Mo Yeon asks him to follow her. The two girls question the boys, who try to lie their way out, but end up telling the truth because of their fear. Mo Yeon gets interrupted by a call, it's her friend. They talk a bit before Kai Hoon's fiance asks her if he is dead, because he has not contacted her. Kai Hoon is with Min Yi, giving him a shot of painkiller, but the snotty patient pulls his arm away, making the doctor feel even more bad. Unable to handle it, Kai Hoon apologizes earnestly, but Min Yi still does not forgive him. Min Yi clearly states that he will not help Kai Hoon out of the guilt, and the doctor staggers out, sobbing. He sits alone and cries his eyes out, closing his walkie talkie. He is approached by a local kid who holds his hand, saying he is very hurt. Mo Yeon gets alerted, and the doctors rush to Medicube, where they see that all the narcotics have been stolen. It's Fatima, the girl they saved. Fatima calls someone, telling him she has the medicine. It seems she has been tricked by a boy. Si Jin and Mo Yeon get information on where she could be and go there. They hear the scream of a girl, and they rush inside, seeing the girl on the floor with several boys surrounding her. The boys pull out their guns, and Si Jin tells Mo Yeon to run to the car and wait for five minutes. If he does not come, she should leave. The fight begins, and Mo Yeon runs to the car and waits while Si Jin has a gunfight, shooting at the thugs. As him and Fatima are about to leave, they are cornered by two people. With no way out, Si Jin panics. But, much to his surprise, Mo Yeon rushes into the building, pushing the thugs back with the car and lets Si Jin and Fatima in. On the way back, Mo Yeon gushes about how exhilarating the whole experience was. Soon, the car stops because it has been beat up too much. Ji Young is at the landmine site and thinks about Myung Ju's father's words. He gets approached by Myung Ju, who sits by him and beckons him forward, putting on sun cream on him. Ji Young pulls the girl closer, and right when he is about to kiss her, Si Jin talks in the mic asking for help. Mo Yeon lectures Fatima and agrees to pay fees for her education as a loan. Later, they both sit at the base and talk a bit, before Si Jin asks her to have ramen with him. As they are about to eat, the lights go out, but Si Jin puts on night vision helmet with goggles on the doctor, and they enjoy the ramen. Meanwhile, the greedy chief manager of the Yuruk plant is at a rundown motel room. He defecates out all the pieces of the diamond and gets a fake ID from a person, paying him a lot of money. He is dressed up as a Middle Eastern man and eats the diamonds yet again. This time, they stink. The next day, he goes to the airport, but when he uses his fake ID, he gets caught. It seems someone ordered for his arrest, and soon, Si Jin and Di Young get to know that diamonds are involved. The chief manager has been kidnapped by Argus, and when they cannot find the diamonds anywhere, they attempt to cut open his stomach, but when they are about to, they get attacked by smoke bombs. Argus tries to make a run for it alone, but he is approached by Si Jin with a gun. The soldier tells him to stay put, or else he will die. The chief manager is taken by Si Di Young, and the Alpha team agrees to retreat without excess bloodshed. At Medicube, Si Jin asks about the diamond's whereabouts, but the greedy man does not tell him. Mo Yeon returns with an X-ray, and turns out, he has swallowed the diamonds. He begins to throw up blood, and has to be operated on immediately. Inside the operating room, Myung Ju fills in for Dr. Song, but as they begin the procedure, blood spurts out, hitting Myung Ju and Mo Yeon. Mo Yeon calculates the symptoms again, and with a tense expression, she tells everyone to back away from the table, because the man seems to have a virus infection that is highly contagious. The rest of the medical staff are told to leave, and Myung Ju and Mo Yeon, who have already been exposed to the virus, perform the operation. When Si Jin and Di Young hear about this, they rush to where the two doctors are getting their blood tested. 
They seriously ask the girls if they are okay, and it seems to be an emotional moment. The soldiers rush to the US Army base to get the girls tested. The results come out, and turns out it's an M3 virus, and only one of the girls have it. Seo Di Young rushes back to Medicube, going in and hugs Myung Ju close to his chest. At first she is confused, but seeing how he is clinging to her, she assumes that she is the one with the virus. Mo Yeon and Myung Ju sit together in that desperate state, and try to joke about whether they should each take a blood diamond for themselves. The two soldiers enter Medicube, and Di Young rushes in to hug Myung Ju. She tries to push him away but soon stops, realizing that he is hugging her, because she is the one with the virus. Di Young's eyes let out tears, as Myung Ju tells Si Jin to take his friend away, but the lover refuses to let the sick woman go. Mo Yeon watches with sadness at the sad display of emotions. Myung Ju forcefully pulls Di Young away, and orders him as her senior to leave. Once alone, Di Young asks Mo Yeon if his lover will live or die, and the young doctor assures him that she has more chances to live because she is healthy. Si Jin also asks her if there is anything that can be done to save the soldier girl, and Mo Yeon tells him this is a war for doctors, so she will take care of it. The two strong people make announcements, calmly alerting people of the spread of the virus, while also reminding them of their duties. Later, Han Yai is drawing blood from Dr. Song, when he starts teasing her about him potentially being positive for the virus, but she slaps his arm loudly. Di Young sits alone in quarantine, having hugged Myung Ju. He needs to be away from others, until they are sure he is not sick. Si Jin talks to his friend through the door, and hands him a walkie-talkie, so that he can talk to Myung Ju. He turns the device on, and gets in contact with the sick girl, who tells him she misses him. He comfortingly asks her if she has eaten, but she replies with I miss you, and asks him if he ate. But he replies with the same thing, trying to stop his tears. She asks again if he ate, wanting to hear the words again, and they both cry on the line. Myung Ju reminds him that he called her a virgin ghost, and wonders if it was foreshadowing. But Di Young lets her know that she has been an angel since she came to his life. They hang up, teary-eyed. The next morning, the higher officials request Si Jin's presence, and tells him to transfer Myung Ju to a US hospital. But the soldier refuses, saying it is not in the M3 virus manual. Back in Korea, the volunteer's family and friends are hit with yet another news of the virus, after the anxiety-inducing earthquake, and they rush to call their loved ones, but obviously no one answers. Kai Hoon's mom forces the chairman of the hospital to call Kai Hoon, and is quite aggressive in doing so. Dr. Pyo gets a message from Dr. Song, and he asks her for textbook pictures of the virus, at Medicube he studies them, trying to get to the bottom of this virus. After a long day, Mo Yeon sits outside, massaging her feet. Si Jin sees her and smiles, walking towards her. Sitting together, he asks her what her blood type is, but she flirts back, saying it is his ideal type. He laughs, and exclaims that he has lost. She smiles cheerfully at him, as he tells her that he wants to hug her, but has to hold back. It is soon time for Mo Yeon to leave, to check the outpatients. As she is doing so, the power goes out, and Mo Yeon runs to where the Yuruk plant manager's ventilator has shut down. There are no doctors around near him, except for Kai Hoon and Myung Ju. Kai Hoon gets on top of a seizuring patient, and holds him down, as Myung Ju gets a sedative. Min Yi watches, scared out of his wits, as Dr. Kai Hoon bravely holds the patient down, even after being bitten by him. At last, the chief faints again, right when Mo Yeon rushes into the room, dreadfully seeing the bite mark on her junior's arm. She later sits and puts ointment on it, reminding him that the patient would have died. If he did not do that, she compliments him. When Min Yi is leaving the room, he looks back and asks if Kai Hoon will contract the virus, and lightly compliments him for looking like a cool doctor. After he leaves, the young doctor bursts into tears, but they are of relief. He says he can finally go to Korea. And later, he sits alone, talking to his wife finally. The next day, Nurse Choi rushes to Mo Yeon, and gives her the happy news that all the patients have come back negative. They are free from the virus. Di Young watches Myung Ju sleep, overfilled with relief and joy that she is not going to die now. He does not seem to pay attention to Si Jin, who is complimenting himself, and soon, the soldiers are called to the cafeteria for an emergency. As they rush in, they see Argus holding Mo Yeon and Fatima captive. They are armed men with guns, who have the doctors from Medicube under hostage. Mo Yeon asks why he is here, whether he is here to test for the virus, but he says he already tested negative. The egoistical man says he is here to meet the chief, but Si Jin tells him he is not welcome here. Argus says he is here to get something shiny, because he adores shiny things, and women. As the dangerous man is getting something out of his jacket, the soldiers point his guns at him. But Argus takes out antibodies to heal the M3 virus. He gives the doctors the antidote, and then leaves. Yae finds out that Dr. Song does not have the virus, he just had a common cold, and rushes to meet him. With passion, she ends up hugging him, but soon realizes that doing something like this is not part of her personality, and moves away shyly. Dr. Song holds her hand, as she leaves in a dramatic way, and pulls her towards himself, hugging her close. She pretends to not like it, but they both know they like each other. The doctor slyly gives Yae a piece of paper, but it turns out to be a cure for the virus that he found, not anything romantic. 
He gives his reports to Mo Yeon, who compliments him for his efforts. Alone in her room, Myung Ju calls her father and asks why he did not check up on her. The father takes a deep breath and says, there is nothing he could do for her, as a father or as a captain, so he powerlessly waited for her to call. To which the emotional Myung Ju replies, that she will get through this, but she has two requests to make of him. First, she asks for his forgiveness, for her rude words before she flew to Yurok. Her father sucks in a breath and asks her to get better soon. The second request she makes is for Di Young. She wishes that he does not take Di Young's post from him, no matter what. Myung Ju admits that she heard everything he talked about with her lover after telling her to leave. And it is shown that Myung Ju was crying for Sergeant Di Young's tough decisions. When Mo Yeon arrives, Myung Ju hangs up, but unfortunately, the monitor begins to beep loudly and the young soldier faints. Her fever won't reduce, so the doctors have to give her an ice bath before her organs begin to fail. The truck that Daniel was bringing, which held the antidote for the virus gets seized by Argus's men, putting the female soldier's life at more risk. At this rate, they will have to try the cure Dr. Song came up with. Si Jin gets a call from Argus, who asks him to make a deal. He wants the diamonds in exchange for the medicine, and the two soldiers rush to the area Argus tells them to come to. At the scene, Argus does not come himself, he sends one of his men. The exchange occurs without bloodshed. Or so it was thought, but out of anger for how they put Myeongju in danger, Di Young rushes forward and hits Argus's men, evoking men from both sides, to point their guns at each other. Back at Medicube, Myeongju sits in the ice bath, trying to hold back the pain. Mo Yeon tells her to hang in there, because the medicine will be here. Mo Yeon is called outside, and she witnesses Fatima being taken by the police. They are taking her under arrest for dealing in the black market, and the accomplice, who turns out to be the guy who fooled her with love, has already confessed. The doctors get a call from Daniel, alerting them of antidote which has arrived. They soon give it to Myeongju, and wait for her fever to drop, which soon does. The anxiety-induced event does not seem to end for Si-jin, when he finds out that Fatima and Mo Yeon were taken by the police. But as he suspects, they were not police after all. As he is rushing to where they might be, he sees Fatima on the side of the road, and as he runs to her, a gunshot hits her leg. Si-jin holds the young girl, and points his gun at the men. But when he sees Mo Yeon come forward with a gun pointed at her head, he unarms himself. Argus, who is behind all of this, says that Si Jin should understand the severity of the situation. Si Jin agrees to talk. They put Mo Yeon in a car, and Argus tells him that after he delivers the weapons to his country, they will try to kill him. He wants the soldier to come up with a solution, to save him and get him out of the country. He soon drives away with the pretty doctor. Mo Yeon gets a transmission from Si Jin, who promises that he will save her no matter what. But soon, Argus throws the walkie-talkie away. Si Jin rushes to his seniors, but the political complications of this case are severe. The captain tells Si Jin that he is not part of any Alpha team right now. He is only a soldier here in Europe to bring peace, but the soldier is rigid in his decision to save Mo Yeon. They get a call from the Blue House, who tells them to keep this information top secret, until they come up with a plausible solution, but Si Jin exclaims that they do not have much time to wait. His tone is aggressive, and he gets scolded, but he says he will continue with the rescue of the hostage. The soldiers try to stop him, by closing the gate, but Si Jin is ready to knock it down. He does not get to, because he gets a call from the chief, who tells him that for three hours, he is not part of the army. That is as much time, as he has to save his love. Si Jin gets out of his uniform, and in his informal clothes, packs guns and ammunition. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon sits in a building, her hands tied behind her back. She tells Argus that she has nothing to lose in Korean, but he slaps her hard with the hilt of the gun, and tells her to speak English, and not to think of him as a good man. Argus begins to talk about Si Jin, and the mysterious and dangerous life he leads. He suggests that Mo Yeon break up with the soldier now. Mo Yeon refuses to speak in English for the man, and cusses at him. Di Young tries to contact Si Jin, but all to no avail. It is obvious that the soldier is rushing into something dangerous. He has even left his army tag behind, in case he dies. Si Jin calls the secretary of the Arab VIP, and asks for his help. Myung Ju's condition seems to be improving, as she sleeps. When she opens her eyes, she sees Di Young by her bed. She sits up, and tells him she feels okay now, further asking him why he is not in uniform, but in normal clothes. He explains the situation to her, and how he is leaving behind his friend. The soldier then gives his army tag to her, and she tells him he will come back to her no matter what. He then gathers three of his most talented army men, and begins the rescue hostage mission, giving them the choice of backing out. Meanwhile, Big Boss, Aka Si Jin arrives to the building, where Mo Yeon is kept. He infiltrates smoothly, shooting at the men. As he is shooting, Argus's armed man comes with a child hostage, but Di Young comes from behind, shooting at the man. Si Jin is extremely relieved to see his friend, and welcomes him with open arms, not bothering to hide his happiness. The Blue House is holding a meeting regarding the matter, and the chief commander gets the worst of the berating. Myung Ju's father listens to the politicians talking of national security, 
When finally he cannot listen further, he taunts them for governing behind closed door, whereas his soldiers dedicate their youth to serving the country. He finishes strongly by saying that he will take all responsibility for this hostage mission. Myeongju receives soup made with herbs from Yewa, and she drinks it one go, as the doctors bombard her with questions regarding Mo Yeon's safety. She tells them not to worry, because the soldiers will save her. Argus looks at the time, and then takes Mo Yeon away. As they are walking, Si Jin comes up to them, telling Argus he has his safety route out, so he should let the hostage go. But as soon as he sees bruises on her face, Si Jin alerts the snipers to be on standby. Turns out, Argus has made Mo Yeon wear a vest with a bomb. Di Young also arrives to where the exchange is supposed to happen, and notifies Si Jin that the bomb has a wireless transmitter, which can be undone, if given time. Argus asks Mo Yeon what they are saying, but she snarkily replies back, making him point a gun at her. Si Jin shoots the gun out of his hand, and soon, he is told that the green light he is supposed to shoot at, is right by the doctor's shoulder. He swiftly begins to shoot, and hits the green light straight. A gun war ensues after that, and Di Young and Si Jin fire away at Argus and his men, hitting them. They take Mo Yeon away from the scene, to work on the detonation of the bomb. She tries to stay calm, as Sergeant Choi works on the bomb. Si Jin calms her down, but she says they only have 30 minutes left before it goes off, so the soldiers should run. Di Young takes the vest off her, saying he could not stop it, and Si Jin throws it out of the window, where it bursts in a loud fire. Argus, although injured, picks up his gun in an attempt to eliminate Si Jin and Mo Yeon, and as he is about to, Si Jin hugs her, and gets shot on his back. It does not seem to be lethal, because he then shoots his old friend Argus, eliminating him. After the entire event is finished, they use the plane requested by Si Jin from the Arab VIPs to go back to the base. Si Jin then fulfills his duties as a soldier, notifying Lieutenant General Yoon that the hostage is safe and that the perpetrator is dead. General Yoon lets Si Jin off with a warning, telling him he will not be punished, but he will also get no reward for his heroic act. The chief of security, once again angry at Yoon for being proud, threatens to tell on him to the president. But thankfully, as soon as their seniors arrive, he tells General Yoon that he will not be getting punished for a successful mission. Back in Yuruk, Myeongju runs out to greet the helicopter that has just arrived, carrying Di Young, who is safe and sound. She stumbles on the stairs, but her lover catches her. Mo Yeon sees Yu see Jin sitting alone, glancing at an old photo of his old army squad, which used to have Argus in it. He lights the photo on fire, watching it burn. Yae treats Mo Yeon's wounds, including the gunshot graze on her shoulder. She seems to still be in shock about everything that happened, so when her friends try to joke with her, she bursts in tears. The next morning, everything seems to be back to normal. The soldiers are once again jogging shirtless, which seems to irk Sang Hyun, who pulls Di Young aside to complain about it, but the soldier lightly grins and ignores the doctor. Mo Yeon and Si Jin are not talking much after whatever happened, but the young doctor finds him to ask about Fatima, and he says she is being treated at Corps Command. But the meticulous Mo Yeon reminds the soldier that he seems to lie to her a lot, like the time he told her the kids at the haunted village were safe, even though they were taken by Argus. Si Jin tries explaining that he only did not want to worry her, but Mo Yeon has had this doubt for a long time, further cemented by Argus, when he told her that she does not know who Yu Si Jin is. Mo Yeon tears up from the way their relationship seems to be going. She says she does not want to be scared about always being sure he will lie to her. With fear in his mind, Si Jin asks Mo Yeon if she wants to break up with him, but she says she only wants to make sure that he is a person she can be with. She walks away. After that, Si Jin goes to the airport and sees Argus's body being taken away by the US Army. An American soldier that did not have good relations with Si Jin before now comes up to him and thanks him for his services, and sarcastically also thanks him for all the paperwork the US soldiers will have to do. Si Jin half-heartedly apologizes. Finally, it is time for the Heesung medical staff to head back to Korea, although they are not as eager as they once were. Staying so long in Europe has made almost everyone comfortable here. They perform their last rounds around Medicube, visiting Myeongju first, who seems to be healing fast. They also visit Young Su, and Mo Yeon takes this chance to tell him that his actions and behavior put everyone at risk. But the only thing he manages to whisper is about his diamonds. Mo Yeon tells him he will be deported to Korea after his recovery, where he will receive punishment. There is a fax for Kai Hoon, they are his results. Surprisingly, Min Yi asks to take them to the young, innocent doctor, and hands it to him moodily, as is his personality. However, he does tell Kai Hoon that he is glad the doctor won't die, and when Kai Hoon sits still in shock, Min Yi snaps at him to not reply. Clearly, he is not mad with the doctor anymore. Now free to roam around, Kai Hoon goes out for some fresh air, but is startled by his little local friend. The doctor gives the young boy a pair of sneakers, the boy says he would rather take a goat, and keeps repeating the word jaddy, making Kai Hoon think that is the boy's real name. Mo Yeon thinks about Si Jin, and how he protected her from the bullet. She also thinks about how he was crying, while throwing away the picture of himself and Argus, unaware that she was watching him. She decides to go talk to him, and asks him for a cup of coffee, and to meet her outside. 
He arrives with two cups but surprisingly, the pretty doctor steps into his arms, as he stands there awkwardly with the cups in his hands, surprised at her actions, as they are quite unlike her. She talks to him calmly about how her day went. Her resolution about her entire conflict with his, is that she will now tell him of all the little things about her day. This means she wants to make it work between them, she sweetly asks him to allow her one thing, to let her worry about him. For the first and last time, as Mo Yon assures him, she asks what he will choose, the country or her. Si Jin says it's her. He then starts joking about what he should do with his country then. But then he says his country will not get jealous, which is good for him. This time, Si Jin pulls her in for a hug, and they cuddle happily. Now to Di Young, he seems relaxed now, that Myung Ju is starting to get better. The sweet couple sit together, as Myung Ju hands him his dog tag back, saying she loves him. Afterwards, the two friends try making ginseng chicken soup for their lovers, but they are too clumsy in the kitchen, annoying Kim gi -bom. The conversation turns to Mo Yeon and Myung Ju, who once again argue about the guy they both had a crush on, and the two soldiers slyly keep quiet, knowing better than to try to get into the fierce ladies' conversation. Soon, they both realize that they are arguing about their old crush, in front of their current boyfriends. Seems like, it is the women's turns to answer the questions shot at them by Si Jin and Di Young. Later, Mo Yeon searches for an upset Si Jin, and finds him in his office. She pretends to be sick at first, but he obviously does not buy it. Her next plan is to call her old flame again, but Si Jin skillfully flips the phone from her hand, like the first time they met. Little did he know, Mo Yeon has learned a lot, and she catches the phone, telling him to listen up. Assertively, Kang lets you know that she has never liked a guy more than she likes him, highlighting all the things they have been through together that has now made their bond as strong as iron. By the time her mini-speech is finished, Si Jin cannot keep the smile off his face, and just like that, he is no longer mad. The next day, the two go to visit Fatima. Mo Yeon wants Daniel and Yewa to be her guardians, but Si Jin does not think that's a good idea, because the couple moves around a lot, he does have a solution though. They take Fatima to meet the waitress that helped Si Jin. Her name, Valentine. The waitress agrees to look after the young girl. Mo Yeon and Fatima share a heartfelt goodbye, where Fatima promises to stay in touch with the courageous Korean doctor. Later on, Si Jin asks Mo Yeon what she would like to do with him, once they are back in Korea, and asks specifically if she would like to see a movie with him again. The doctor agrees, saying that she wants to do things normal couples do, like go on coffee dates and movies, not get kidnapped. Si Jin then tosses her a hard object. Mo Yeon catches it, and realizes that it is the rock from the beach, that she visited with him, when they first arrived in Yurok and were together. She gets emotional about the fact that the soldier still has it, and he compliments her bravery. They then share a kiss as the sun sets. The next morning, the women of Medicube enjoy their last morning in Yurok, watching the shirtless soldiers jog, when they notice Sang Hyun among them. He is jogging in nothing but a pair of shorts, embarrassing Ya Yi. After the final packing is done, the medical staff observe their last siren call. They remember all the people who lost their lives in the earthquake, and soon they pose for a final group photo with the soldiers, before traveling back. Everyone is now back in Korea, and life seems to be settling back to normal for everyone. Everyone is now busy in their own life, Mo Yeon and Si Jin set relationship guidelines, while Di Young makes a life-changing decision. The doctors are now back, and soon they visit Hee Sung their place of work, and are greeted by all their friends who miss them. The reluctant director Han waits by the reception, and when Kai Hoon comes in, the young doctor is scolded for his mother's harassment. Kai Hoon does not pay attention solely because, all his attention is on his wife. Han also notifies the employees, that there will be a bonus for all of those who went to Yurok, and underwent such a dangerous natural disaster. He hands Mo Yeon a bouquet of flowers moodily, because of the fact that he thinks, Mo Yeon did not come back from the first plane to annoy him. Mo Yeon chats animatedly with her friend, Jaisu who teases her about falling in love. Everyone seems to know about her newly formed relationship, and they seem very interested. She calls Si Jin later, complaining about missing Yuruk, and how there are not any shirtless males in Korea. Moreover she tells him of her plans to open up her own clinic, and asks if he will support her if she goes broke. The teasing goes back and forth, as Si Jin jokes about her having the strength, and experience of a true soldier. Mo Yeon has finally decided to resign from the hospital, and although the boastful Mr. Han apologizes for his behavior, she does not rethink her decision. However, when she goes to the bank to get her loan approved, so she can open her own clinic, the bank teller tells her she cannot, because of her recent unemployment. Meanwhile, Myung Ju and Di Young are still in Yuruk, where the female soldier is recovering. Di Young suggests that she leave the army, and open her own clinic with her experience, as a doctor, but Myung Ju clearly says that she finds that being a doctor in the army is easier, and jokes about the country facing a national loss if she were to resign from the army. Si Jin walks in with the order that Myung Ju gets sent back to Korea. Si Jin tries to take credit for the decision, but gets quieted by the sassy female. Little does she know, Si Jin actually did persuade Lieutenant Park to send her home, lightly threatening him that if she found out he was about to send her to the US Army base when she was sick, she will make his life hell. 
Mo Yeon calls Si Jin, crying to him about her problems with the loan. He berates her for being stupid enough to leave her job before applying for a loan. Now, her only choice is to go back to director Han and get her old job back. She approaches her ex-boss with flowers and a well-made speech, and he understands right away what this is about. Thankfully, he grants her permission to come back, but gives her a night shift as punishment. Now back to work, Mo Yeon walks to the door to oversee patients. Kai Hoon and his fiancée visit the doctor to get results for their ultrasound. They are delighted to know that their baby is healthy and due in a couple of weeks. Kang Mo Yeon is then approached by her rival, Dr. Kim, who asks if the rumors about her dating a soldier are true, but Mo Yeon is not petty and she denies giving away any personal information. Kim tries digging into Mo Yeon's reasoning, but the pretty doctor realizes that the only thing that matters is being happy. Dr. Kim, now annoyed downgrades what the Yuruk team did in the area, saying they only took pictures and administered shots, making the entire medical team glare at her. Seeing the tension, the annoying doctor scurries away. Sang Hyun and Yae walk to the roof to discuss a few things, like the loan Yae took from the mail to pay for her sister's college, and she is almost done repaying him. Back in Yuruk, the soldiers all get ready to go home, to their friends and families, even Di Young who is adorably wearing a moisturizing mask on his face. Di Young then excuses himself to be alone for some time, to think about the offer General Yoon made to him, and that is when Myung Ju joins him. She sits and starts complaining cutely, but she gets quiet, when Di Young tells her he loves her. Myung Ju asks, scared if he is breaking up, but Di Young smiles gently, and assures her that is not the case. The soldiers make it back to Korea, and re given three days leave to relax and do as they please. Di Young takes this time to work on his discharge request, only hesitating for a second, before signing. The two friends now make it their mission to drink for all three days, and their other army friend, Snoopy, also joins them, because his wife got mad at him. Hearing about their arrival, Mo Yeon finds the boys drinking. Myung Ju is also there, and when Mo Yeon stares at the intoxicated men, Myung Ju tells her this is the norm for them. The two boys argue about which girl is prettier, and naturally, Si Jin points to Mo Yeon. Si Jin has been trying to contact his friends to join him for drinking, and soon they do join, turning the drinking turns into a whole party. Soon, everyone leaves, but Di Young and Si Jin remain there, motivated to keep drinking. Surprisingly, Sang Hyun is there as well, trying to keep up with the soldiers drinking. Soon enough, Si Jin realizes that his girlfriend is among them too, but he does not recognize her, due to his drunken stupor. Mo Yeon drinks a bit as well, however she is soon drunk, because of her low alcohol tolerance, and has to be taken home by Si Jin, who has amazing control and tolerance. A noise in Mo Yeon's home makes the soldier think that there's an intruder, and he takes necessary precaution. But soon, Mo Yeon recognizes her mother's coat and bag. The doctor's mother enters from the kitchen door to see her drunk daughter with a man, who looks like he is ready to attack an intruder, but soon, Si Jin introduces himself as Mo Yeon's boyfriend. After hearing about his reputable job, the mother is happy because he seems to be very compatible with her daughter. After leaving Mo Yeon in the care of her mother, he meets up with her later, when they are both in their senses, asking if her mother liked him. But Mo Yeon does not remember anything about the meeting, leaving Si Jin baffled. He suddenly gets a call, and Mo Yeon understands that it is his duty calling him again. He hangs up and tells Mo Yeon that he has to go to the department store, which is a code name for a dangerous mission. Si Jin is scared that Mo Yeon will break up with him like last time, but she gives him a dazzling smile and says they will watch a movie when he gets back. Si Jin and Di Young, both part of the Alpha team that undergoes dangerous missions, are briefed. They are taken aback to see Lieutenant Park as their commander. They are sent to the capital of North Korea to be security for a meeting between the North and the South. Si Jin comes face to face with the North Korean soldier he fought with once. They make conversation, where the other soldier apologizes to Si Jin for wounding him, and Si Jin in turn apologizes for the soldier getting demoted, and they grin at each other, obviously having respect. They even have lunch together, but of course they have to sit at separate tables, so that others don't think they are getting along. Once back from the mission, the soldier goes to visit his lover in the hospital, and coincidentally gets on the same elevator as Director Han, who is telling his assistant that he sends Mo Yeon flowers every day, but she does not accept them. Han asks if his assistant has gotten any information on Mo Yeon's boyfriend, and Si Jin shows him a group photo, pointing to himself. Han realizes that Mo Yeon's lover is the guy standing in front of him. The measly director follows you, asking about his skills in fighting. Si Jin gets up in Han's face and reminds him of the hotel incident, subtly threatening the rich but low man. Meanwhile, Dr. Kim is there with Mo Yeon again, trying to show her authority, but Mo Yeon is not one to be swayed. When Kim sees Si Jin enter, she tries flirting with him, but the soldier remains rigid, saying he is Mo Yeon's boyfriend, and soon Mo Yeon drags him away. They go to the mall, all while Mo Yeon grumbles about the fact that her boyfriend did not know that she does not like Dr. Kim. But soon enough, she hears that he met Han, and gets concerned about the meeting. Si Jin teases her, enjoying her reaction, and soon ends the chattering. 
He gives her a beautiful necklace as a gift, and although Mo Yeon says a gift is not enough to cheer her up, it works wonders. They soon meet up with Myung Ju and Ji Young for a double date, and the boys take the girls to a restaurant they have been to before. The waiter recognizes them and mentions their old girlfriends, which were actually the stuffed animals that they bought, but nevertheless, it makes the two girls jealous. They talk about an event that happened with Ji Young, and it makes Myung Ju swoon hard for her boyfriend. Si Jin and Mo Yeon leave the two lovebirds alone. And soon enough, Myung Ju gets a call from a man, and Ji Young snatches the phone from her hands, the second time it rings. Turns out, it is the soldier that spies on Ji Young. There is slight tension between the couple, as Ji Young comes close for a kiss, and then lies about not doing it as a punishment, but in the end, kissing her sweetly. After returning to the army base, Ji Young scares the spy, and gets him to call Myung Ju, and say good things about the soldier. He finds out that Myung Ju's father will be back tomorrow. And the next day, he uses this opportunity to turn his resignation in. Myung Ju is there too, and she is extremely disappointed. She takes the soldier outside the room to talk, telling him it was not easy for her to argue with her father, so he could keep his position while still having her. This makes the boy furious. He says that he wanted to be accepted by her father for who he was, not when the father's daughter asked for him, while almost dying. They go through a painful breakup, and Myung Ju wishes him a happy life. Ji Young stands there, surprised that she did not try to talk him out of it. Meanwhile, Si Jin and Mo Yeon finally get time to watch their movie. Unfortunately, Mo Yeon is the one who is called this time, and she tells him he should stay and finish the movie. Alpha Team is called for the second half of South Korea's meeting with the North, and there, Si Jin finds out about Ji Young's breakup, surprising him. At the sound of footsteps, the two friends look back to see the North soldier walking their way, looking angry. At the hospital, Mo Yeon has to rush to the ER, to tend to a patient with multiple gunshot wounds. Turns out, it's the same North Korean soldier. Sang Hyun takes over, because there is another ambulance coming, and Mo Yeon sees the crucial patient in that one, realizing in horror that is his Si Jin, covered in blood. The North Korean soldier was unarmed, and as the two soldiers held him at gunpoint, he said he only needs their help. He had asked to be sent home, but before explaining, shots rang out, and soon, several men kidnap Young Jun, the North Korean soldier. Si Jin follows the van, where Young Jun is being held, and suavely moves around the other cars. However, Si Jin only has one bullet left, and he notifies Ji Young that he will stop the van. He soon shoots a hole in a fire extinguisher, as the van is passing by it, and the van skids to a stop. Unfortunately, Si Jin is shot several times, and soon loses consciousness. At the hospital, he goes into cardiac arrest, the final stage after which he would be considered no more. Mo Yeon starts doing chest compression on her man, desperately begging him to wake up, and thankfully by God's will, a weak voice comes from him, telling her the chest pumps hurt. Now conscious, he asks about Yoon Jun, but Mo Yeon snaps at him, telling him this is not the time to be worrying about others. Si Jin smiles weakly at her, but then tries to get up. Mo Yeon thinks the North soldier is the one who shot Si Jin, but he explains that the man is a friend of his. Nurse Min Jai runs to Mo Yeon and tells him that Yoon Jun is conscious and freaking out. They rush up to see what is going on and witness the soldier with the scalpel against Ya Yi's throat. Si Jin asks Yoon Jun to drop the weapon and let the South Korean doctors help him out, something he is reluctant about. Young Jun soon loses what little consciousness he had, and drops. Mo Yeon is the one who will be performing the surgery, and meanwhile, she asks the other doctors to treat Si Jin. She successfully does the soldier's surgery, and luckily his injuries are not too severe. However, she does notice a recent wound on his arm, indicating that he had been implanted with something. Back at the site, Di Young digs into the case and finds out that Young Jun is innocent. He was being pursued by Metagonian security because he made a fake passport, which was a bit of an overreaction, speculated by Di Young. Si Jin is relieved to hear that the surgery on his friend was a success, and soon gets berated once again by Mo Yeon, who cannot believe he is so careless with his life. He apologizes meekly, but the pretty doctor with the anger issues does not accept it, just like that. And it makes sense, he almost lost his life in her arms. She tells him she will eliminate him herself once he recovers, something Si Jin finds adorable. Soon, men in black suits follow Di Young inside, as he tells Mo Yeon that no one is allowed in this room anymore. Later, Mo Yeon gives the soldier the microchip she took out from Young Jun's arm. Dr. Kim once again obnoxiously asks Mo Yeon what kind of activities her boyfriend is involved in, for there to be so many men in black suits around the hospital, and Mo Yeon sighs, staying quiet. Soon she is also called by Director Han, who is being loud, trying to get into Si Jin's room, but being stopped by the security guards. He also asks Mo Yeon about her boyfriend's job. Meanwhile, inside the room, Si Jin interrogates Young Jun, but the North soldier stays silent. He does not even answer when Si Jin asks if he wants political asylum, and soon the handsome South soldier notifies his boss that the North soldier wants to be sent back. 
Things are tense at the hospital for everyone, but one person, Si Jin, who talks about food, rather than asking important questions. As it is later found out, Young Jun is wanted by Interpol, as a murder suspect. Two days ago in Japan, a sniper was found dead, and Young Jun was the main suspect. The sniper was actually the North Korean soldier that fought with Di Young once, one of Young Jun's subordinates. The microchip Di Young sent to be analyzed is heavily encrypted and will need at least a week to get through to, but the North's government wants their soldier back by tomorrow, which is a problem. Their best bet is getting the answers directly from the bruised and battered patient. But Si Jin knows he won't talk, as long as they are not alone. He needs Mo Yeon's help now, and she makes up an excuse to take Young Jun to the CT room, where Si Jin can talk to him without being heard. Now alone, Young Jun asks for his belongings back, and Si Jin hands him the copy of the chip. This is enough to get the man to talk, and he explains why he was in Japan, and what he was doing. Si Jin asks for the password to the chip, but stubbornly the man eats it whole, not allowing his secrets to be let out. Si Jin tells him that the North Korean government will have him in the morning, which makes Young Jun tense. Si Jin exits the room, leaving Young Jun alone, and the man, who is supposed to be sedated, picks the lock of his handcuffs with a needle, setting his hands free, before jumping out the window. He climbs to the lower floor and tries getting in another room, but finds Si Jin in the room, waiting for him with a gun in his hand. He tells Si Jin that he has to finish his mission no matter what, which does not make sense to Si Jin, because it is obvious that Young Jun does not want to go back to his country. He asks the man why he came to see him, and Young Jun admits that it is because they share a common enemy, his country has betrayed him. Young Jun points a gun at his own heart and claims that a true soldier does not betray his own country. After killing his comrade, Young Jun had called his commander and had then realized that the higher official was the bug in the system. Young Jun wants to die on his country's soil, Si Jin loses all softness in his eyes. He reminds Young Jun that he is also a soldier carrying out his duties and finally, Young Jun slumps in defeat. He is finally handcuffed and taken away, but before leaving, Si Jin hands him a choco pie and tells him to savor it. Now once again in front of his lover, he tries to pretend to be in pain, to get out of her nagging, but Mo Yeon does not buy it. She tells him to pay for the hospital's broken windows. Dr. Kim is being nasty to Kai Hoon's fiance and Jai Su, and soon, Hae Yoon. The fiance grabs the doctor by the hair, but not because she wants to fight, because she is going into labor. Kai Hoon runs when he gets a call about his wife being in labor, and so does Mo Yoon. Meanwhile, Young Jun has taken a commander Choi, the traitor, who pretends to be glad to see him. He reports his mission, telling the man he knows exactly who is the traitor. He soon finds out that there is a sniper that is aiming straight for his heart, and Young Jun says his last words, which are that he would like his favorite bowl of noodles to be placed at his grave. He then gets in action, breaking a bottle and rushing at Choi, but he is shot before he can reach him and passes away. Later, Choi visits the South President again, and they talk about reuniting the separated families. Choi does not look too interested though, it seems as if he is not the least bit interested. When he gets up to leave, the president calls him back and hands him a list of the bribes he took from the mafia. Choi storms out of the meeting room, but is soon met with the soldiers who block his way. They say they have been ordered to take Young Jun and him back to Pyongyang. As it turns out, the sniper who supposedly shot Young Jun was actually Si Jin. What's more interesting is that Si Jin had planted a device in the choco pie he gave Young Jun, meaning that the South Korean government heard everything. Everything now sorted, the soldiers rush Si Jin back to his hospital bed to help him avoid being scolded by Mo Yeon again. She turns to see him and witnesses Di Young taking his friend's pants off. Once she leaves, Di Young asks how they will pay for the broken windows, and Si Jin says they should split the cost like real men. Mo Yeon finds Myung Ju in the hospital lobby, and the female soldier says she is here to see Si Jin. She also tells the doctor about her breakup, and after Mo Yeon's surprise wears off, she understands it and calls the two men dumb and dumber. Meanwhile, Si Jin finds out about Di Young's discharge request and then tells him to go after his girl. He does. Ya Yi and Sang Hyun are witnessing everything from a distance, coming with their own speculations about what is going on. Sang Hyun then starts teasing the older woman about helping him buy a car and then about liking him, and this time, she agrees. The news on TV alerts the civilians that the North and the South have come to a decision and are working to reunite the separated families. Mo Yeon visits Si Jin, who complains that he can only see her during her rounds, and she tells him that she has been extremely worried for his safety, and he tells her he only went to the rooftop for some fresh air. He admits to his girlfriend that he is worried about Young Jun. He does not know whether his friend is dead or alive, but they have different paths to follow. Si Jin invites the doctor to his bed, and they lay down next to each other. She then tells her boyfriend about her day, how Kai Hoon is a father now. Si Jin thanks Mo Yeon for saving his life, and the girl whines about the fact that they are always thanking each other. She makes it known that he understands that he fights for peace, but he should never frighten her again by coming to her covered with blood. Si Jin asks if she wants to see the remainder of the movie they both keep missing out on, and as they play it, they lay in bed together, watching it sleepily, before the two of them doze off, not completing the movie yet again. 
At the hospital, Si Jin gets discharged by Mo Yeon as she signs his papers. He adorably poses for her enjoyment, and as she wheels him out of the building, he gives her his headphones to listen to something. Turns out, it is the recording of Mo Yeon's voice when she was hanging off a cliff. Mo Yeon gets embarrassed, and her hands release the wheelchair, sending poor Yu Si Jin careening down the hill. He falls in a heap, and Mo Yeon comes running, but not to make sure he is okay. It is to make sure that the wheelchair is intact. Meanwhile, Di Young takes Myeon Ju out to eat, but he sits stone-faced, as she eats with her mouth full. Not able to take his silence, the hot-headed soldier asks him why he has brought her here, but Di Young simply tells her that she looked too thin. At this, Myeong Ju raises the question, are they still together? And he sweetly replies that he is in the process of coming to her. They discuss Di Young's decision to actually live as a simple worker, whether he is okay with it. Myeong Ju even offers to cut ties with her father, but Di Young is against the idea. With nothing more to talk about, and having fed her, the man takes his leave. As he is leaving, Myeong Ju tells him she wants a clear reply regarding their relationship next time. All the while, Myeong Ju's father stares at Di Young's discharge request on his table, looking unhappy and distraught. You see Jin calls Kang Mo Yeon at night, and video calls her when she says she is washing up for bed. She hangs up on him, but just two seconds later, he is at her doorstep with beer in his hands. She has him sit, as she goes to shower. And once done, she comes back to a room lit up by only candles. Si Jin remembered that she likes candlelight. Mo Yeon suddenly gets a thought, she asks Si Jin how he managed to save her from Argus, but Si Jin avoids the discussion, trying to distract her. But as usual, Mo Yeon does not buy it. She tells him she will not be angry with whatever it is that he did, and guiltily, Si Jin tells her that he used the business card the Arab VIP gave her, to use whenever she needed. At this, Mo Yeon puffs her face with anger, but understands. Private Kim Gi Bum is also back in Korea, and it is time to give his high school equivalency exam. The Alpha team go to cheer him on, even fulfilling the tradition to get him taffy, and almonds, and hilariously, Di Young tells him to pick the third answer whenever in doubt. After Gi Bum is inside, their phones ring, they understand that it yet again, time for another mission. They head back to the base to prepare for the mission, and that's when Di Young is called by General Yoon, who asks if he wants to go on this three-month mission with his team, or if he wants to be discharged immediately. Di Young says he wishes to go, and at this, Yoon seems relieved, and why would he not be? Di Young is an amazing soldier. Surprisingly, after Di Young exits the room, Yoon rips up the young soldier's discharge request. This means he does not have to leave the army to be with Myeong Ju anymore. Ji Young leaves his name tag on Myeong Ju's doorstep in case he does not come back from the long mission. And Si Jin drives to the hospital to let his lover know that he is leaving on a long mission. Mo Yeon tries not to cry but fails as they hug. She makes him promise that he will come back to her safe and sound. And as he drives away, the doctor recalls Argus's harsh words to her about Si Jin. The doubt in her leaves however when Si Jin texts her that he has reached safely. She keeps a steady stream of communication, telling him about her everyday life, even if he does not respond. After a time skip, it is finally time for Si Jin and Di Young to go back home. However, there is not enough room in the helicopter for everyone, so Si Jin and Di Young remain back, saying they will catch the next helicopter. Alarmingly, out of nowhere, a bullet rips through Si Jin's chest. He falls to the floor as his friend tries to pull him up to safety. He looks like he cannot breathe, and his eyes turn glossy. He sees his old captain, who was shot and died in his arms in the past. Di Young begs Si Jin to stay awake, but soon, the place where they took shelter is met with a fiery explosion. The Alpha team that was on the helicopter watch in horror. Back in Korea, Mo Yeon gets frustrated with Si Jin's lack of communication, unaware of what has happened. She meets up with Myeong Ju to have a few drinks. Myeong Ju is feeling a bit more optimistic about Di Young's return, voicing her plans to kidnap him and take him on a vacation when he gets back. Team Alpha is now back home, and they give General Yoon, their higher up a salute, the two most important on the team missing. Snoopy tells him that the mission was a success, but they have not been able to find the two soldiers' bodies. Si Jin's father is called to the office and told about what has happened, and he does not hide his grief for his son being missing in action. Meanwhile, Myung Ju is researching vacation spots for her trip with Di Young when the spy approaches her. At first, she is happy to see him, but her face falters at the sight of his sad expression. Meanwhile, Snoopy goes to see Mo Yeon at the hospital. The poor soldier cannot even look the woman in the eye. Mo Yeon seems more confused than ever, hardly believing what she is hearing, while Myung Ju asks her spy to repeat himself, unable to comprehend. Mo Yeon is handed a letter written to her by Si Jin. In it, he apologizes for not being able to keep his promise to her. He says he is thankful to have met her, and that he has loved her. Myung Ju staggers to her father's office, the back of her eyes burning with tears. She demands that her father tell her the truth, and he sadly tries to give her the letter left by Di Young. She refuses to accept it, thinking that if she reads the letter, it will be confirmed that her lover is dead. She turns to her father and begins blaming him for his death, saying that he took away all the time the two lovers could have had with each other. Meanwhile, Mo Yeon rushes to the military headquarters and is stopped at the sound of Myung Ju sobbing. 
She loses her composure and begs Myungju to say that this is a mistake. But when she sees a letter by the female soldier, the truth finally sinks in. She finally asks Myungju if this means she will never see the funny, loving soldier again and Myungju nods, making Mo Yeon's legs give out as the two girls wallow in misery. Lieutenant Park visits Mo Yeon and gets her to sign a few papers of confidentiality, telling her that the general public will think that the two men died in a car crash. Mo Yeon asks if her lover's death at least saved a life, and the lieutenant assures her that he died for the country. As time progresses, the doctor throws herself in her work, not giving any time to herself to think about her loss and actually grieve. Her work pays off and she is promoted, which makes Dr. Kim jealous, who tries fighting with the numb doctor, but Mo Yeon does not have enough fight in her after the loss of her boyfriend. The little time she gets for herself, she begins to tear up at the thought of her lover, which is understandable. Myungju prepares to go back to Yuruk, and her father who is guilty that he let his daughter's boyfriend go on that mission, grants her permission. The two girls then meet up with each other and promise to complete the three-day drinking binge tradition that the boys used to do. Myungju tells Mo Yeon the story of how the two boys met each other and how they became friends in the first place. It was when Myungju's father had called Si Jin in to marry his daughter and he had met Di Young outside, who had nervously blurted out the fact that he was dating the general's daughter. After that the two boys had shared an umbrella together. After their meeting is over, Mo Yeon trudges home and passes by a coffee shop where she and Si Jin had said they love each other as she remembers a cute dialogue between her and the sassy soldier. When the doctor gets home, she imagines Si Jin sitting on the couch and erupts in tears yet again. Mo Yeon is at the airport when she gets a call from Daniel. She tells him that she is going to volunteer for the Albanian refugee camp, but it is actually an excuse to go to the place where Si Jin supposedly lost his life. The pretty doctor also sends texts to her lover's number every day, telling him about her life. On message, she wonders if he is proud of her doing community service and being the type of doctor who does free work for underprivileged countries. Gipum is also in Europe when Myungju lands, but he has also gotten a raise, he is now a sergeant, a commanding officer. He makes Myungju a bowl of ramen, telling her that he used to have this food with Di Young quite often. He looks outside to see that it is snowing in Europe, a rare sight. Mo Yeon, now in another country, finds the desert and goes there with flowers in her hand. She ties her hair, remembering the moment when Si Jin did it for her. Ahead, there seems to be a place that is filled with memorials, with stones stacked over each other and tiny flowers. She places the flowers she brought for Si Jin on top of the memorial, and tears up, calling Si Jin a liar for promising that he will come back. All of a sudden, her walkie-talkie crackles to life, and she wipes her tears, and pulls herself together enough to answer. She also tries to put the white stone given to her by her lover, on the memorial, but the wind keeps making it fall. From her walkie-talkie, she hears Si Jin's voice. In shock, she drops the microphone, wondering if she is going crazy. And then she takes out her phone, seeing that all the text messages she sent Si Jin are being read one by one. From the microphone, Si Jin's voice tells her to turn around. She does so, and from a distance, she sees Si Jin walking towards her. He is alive. Unable to believe her eyes at his arrival, she tries running to him. But her legs give out, she collapses on the sand. Si Jin runs to help her out, his appearance filthy and worn out, but alive. Mo Yeon keeps repeating the fact that he is alive, he is alive, and Si Jin says that he somehow overcame the difficulties, that he is very much alive. With tears streaming down his face, he apologizes to his woman, over and over again. When her shock and relief wears off, Mo Yeon's character seems to come back, as she pushes him away, and gets mad at him for doing that to her for months. Her emotions are all over the place, as she cries and sobs and then hugs him, professing her love over and over. Si Jin patiently waits for her, to sort her feelings out. In Yuruk, Gipam and Myungju stare at the snow, and the female leaves to go outside to have a closer look. As she looks at the falling ice, she notices a figure walking to her. It is Di Young, injured but alive. He stops in front of her, eyes welled up with tears after seeing his lover, and says the words he has been dying to say to her, telling her he will not separate from her ever again. Myungju sobs in his chest wordlessly, beating it lightly with her small fists. As Di Young pulls her close for a kiss, she pulls away to express her anger through fists again, before kissing him herself. Kim Gibum is confidently sending his men to the training ground, but at the sight of Di Young, his savior, he bursts into childlike tears. They hug, and Di Young asks how his equivalency exam went, and Gibum weakly says that he passed. Later, Myungju gives him his name tag back, the one she has been wearing all this time, and Di Young tells her that Si Jin is also alive, that they each went to see their lovers right away. Myungju asks what happened to them, and Di Young tells her that they were captured by the enemy, and then tortured for months, before someone came to their rescue, none other than Young Jun. 
Si Jin also tells Mo Yeon the entire story, and she once again fusses about him having a broken arm again. But Si Jin is always jokes around. She is grateful to hear his jokes as well, and hugs him. Unable to believe that he is here, she asks another volunteer to make sure she is not just seeing a ghost. Satisfied that he is indeed alive, Mo Yeon offers him food from his memorial, saying that he should eat it because it was made for him. And as he eats, she takes her friend Jai Su on video call, and shows her Si Jin. Everyone on camera cannot believe what they are seeing, assuming that it is a ghost, not actually a living person. The doctors back in Korea hilariously do not believe that he is alive, and Mo Yeon laughs at their words. Mo Yeon tells Si Jin that everyone wants him dead, and when he says that his feelings are hurt, they shriek. Di Young and Si Jin make their way home, and present it in front of General Yoon. He hugs them both, and thanks them for being alive. Even the grumpy Lieutenant Park bursts into tears at seeing his juniors. When Team Alpha comes in, they waste no moment, and hug the two boys, who have come back alive, and Park feeling left out, barks orders at the two to write an excruciatingly long report about everything that happened. They two boys decide to make the report spicy, but Si Jin bails on his friend, saying that he can do all the work, because his girlfriend is still in Yuruk, and Mo Yeon is in Korea. He later on meets Mo Yeon at the same coffee shop, where they broke up once, and Si Jin asks if she will do so again, making Mo Yeon seriously ask him if he will continue on such dangerous missions. He indirectly makes it known that he will not leave his job, and Mo Yeon says she will support him no matter what, because this is his piece that she is supporting. She asks to go fishing with him the next day. Finally, they have a peaceful date that the two of them wanted. However, Mo Yeon likes action and finds the date boring, making Si Jin propose other plans that involve the two of them alone in a tent. But the young soldier gets excited as soon as Mo Yeon is able to catch a big fish, and with horror, the man who has underwent torture and has seen pain watches Mo Yeon cut open the fish. That night, they lay in their tent together as Mo Yeon shows him the white stone, telling him that if she would have been able to put it back to its original place, she would have let his death go, but several times after buying plane tickets, she had cancelled them, unable to accept his death. Si Jin then pulls her in for a kiss, but the straightforward doctor shoots him down. Meanwhile, Di Young calls Myung Ju to whine about the report he has to write, but in actuality it is because he misses her voice. She tells him that she asks Gi Bum every day if he really is alive, and he offers that she can call him anytime. He tells her of a job for the Alpha team, which will be to escort the Korean idol group, Red Velvet. The soldiers will also be given a concert. And on the day, Si Jin holds up a signboard that says, the singers are better than his girlfriend. Unluckily for him, a video is shot, and Mo Yeon clearly sees what is written on the board. So to get revenge, Mo Yeon coolly says that she does not have time for a boyfriend in her television show. This makes Si Jin huff and puff, but she says that he made it seem like they were not dating, so she assumed they were not in a relationship. How funny. Mo Yeon also told this to Myung Ju, who gives poor Di Young an earful, and the two men do all they can to cheer the annoyed ladies up, not that it works. What has worked to make Mo Yeon's mood better is the fact that Si Jin is being promoted, and the soldier teases her about being happy about the raise in salary. She hilariously says that she is proud to be a squadron leader's girlfriend, one that protects children, the elderly, and women. Meanwhile, she also seems to be the most famous person at the hospital, and it also seems like she has gotten that instructor position that she wanted. Myung Ju is also back in Korea, and she is not upset at him anymore, instead saying that the distance has made her miss him a lot. He suggests that they go see her father tomorrow, with his new decision to keep working for the army. Myung Ju is so happy with the decision, that she forgets all about her annoyances. The next day, they stand in front of her father, hand in hand. And without delay, Myung Ju lies about being pregnant. She thinks that arguing and taking a fighting stance will work out for the couple. Poor Di Young has to explain that it is not true, and he also says that he is not ready to resign from being a soldier, realizing that even when he was being tortured, he never regretted becoming a soldier, and he believes that Korea should not face the loss of losing a good soldier. He further says that he will try to gain Yoon's approval in other ways, but the general clearly tells him that he is already glad to call Di Young his son-in-law. Later on, Myung Ju excitedly tells Mo Yeon that her lover has been accepted by her father, but that is not why she came to see the doctor. Myung Ju then hands her a Christmas card from Fatima, who studies Korean and has decided to become a doctor. Meanwhile, Kai Hoon borrows Sang Hyun's laptop to show everyone the video of Yurik Myung Ju made for him. Yae, finally overcome with curiosity, wonders what Sang Hyun has kept in his hidden folder. And when she opens it, she finally sees that it is not something inappropriate. Rather, there are pictures of Yae ranging from her childhood to adulthood. How sweet. Unable to believe it, she walks down the hospital corridor, numb, until someone bumps into her, making her fall. Sang Hyun witnesses it and runs to help her out, and that is when she tells him that has looked in his secret folder. He makes it known that the folder is like a confession of his love for her, telling her he has loved her since they were children together. Now believing him more than ever, Yae runs off with a shy smile on her face. Mo Yeon buys a new car and names it Big Boss, which is Si Jin's codename on the Alpha team. 
She tells him to drive it because at this point, everyone knows she is horrible with wheels and would most likely have an accident. They go to a car wash, where Mo Yeon purposely sprays Si Jin with water, joking about his shirt being see-through, like he once did with her. The smooth soldier hugs the woman close, claiming that he is freezing now. Myung Ju and Di Young have lunch at the headquarters, while Myung Ju fills up Di Young's plate to feed him well, but that would also give him indigestion. She gives him an invitation of Ye Wa's and Daniel's wedding being held in Canada, and it turns out, the couple has invited the entire Yuruk medical staff as well. Di Young asks if they were already married, but Myung Ju explains that they had to pretend to be, so that Ye Wa would be granted political asylum. The man then asks his lover if she read the letter he sent her, and when she says she didn't, he reads it aloud, having memorized it by heart. She takes the letter out to confirm that he actually memorized it and he did. In the cafeteria, he orders all his subordinates to close their eyes, as he kisses Myung Ju's forehead. Myung Ju stands up, ordering everyone to close their eyes again, as she gives him a real kiss, but the soldiers all cheer them on anyway. Si Jin and Mo Yeon share beers at her apartment, and she tells him that she still donates to Daniel's charity, in order to repay him for the car she broke. Having decided on the trip, Mo Yeon and Si Jin travel back to Yuruk to their beach, where they let go of the white stone. They watch the sunset together, and Si Jin refuses to drink wine with Mo Yeon, because he has the responsibility to take them back to land. Si Jin admits that he feels nervous right now, being with a beautiful lady in the at the beach, and as they look up at a shooting star, the man asks if the doctor made a wish. Mo Yeon urges him to show her more love, and Si Jin gives a mini speech, about how he cannot believe that such a beautiful woman is with him, and she jokes about him committing very good deeds in his past life. Mo Yeon finally tells him, that she has wished for a kiss upon the shooting star, and they kiss, pulling away only long enough to say I love you. A little time later, everyone has gathered in Canada for Ye Wa's and Daniel's wedding, and the bouquet is caught by Di Young who refuses to put it away, clearly excited about being married to Myung Ju. Suddenly the lights go out, and a waitress comes running in, shrieking about a volcano eruption. The guests flee, as we are shown that the soldiers and doctors hang back. Di Young murmurs about the fact, that he should have taken a discharge when given the chance. Myung Ju wipes away her lipstick to get into action. Ya Yi ties her hair up, and Mo Yeon gets ready to break off her heels. And finally, Si Jin loosens his tie, already dreading the report he will have to write. 